we can rip on Pokemon games all we want, you know, like whether like they're just iterating the same thing but with worse mechanics every time or that the performance sucks or that the Pokemon designs aren't great, but legit, they are doing a good job on the music front and they've always sort of done that, but they're getting pretty good. Still. I don't know. Three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the B and stream today on this fine 12th of February 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. I am peeking the mic a fair bit, so I'm just gonna move it a little bit, a little tiny bit away. <laughs> I realized that my mic was uh, not set at a very, very full level. And so I'm just like, I'm just eating it, I'm like, oh my gosh. But no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. We should just leave it pretty straight. Uh, but yeah, no, I hope you're having a wonderful week. And uh, how about let's begin this wonderful week or end the last wonderful week, depending on, I don't know, when, whenever you guys watch this. Uh, we shall jump into a new game or an old game, but it's a new game as in I haven't played it on stream ever or on my channel ever, which has probably been the case for a lot of games. Let's jump the ship. We got the audio. Where's the video? Hey, there it is. Sony Computer Entertainment. That's right. Sony makes video games. Count your blessings. We, we apparently. Uh, I, I, I say this being like so pessimistic and so like, um, not pessimistic is probably the term, but like disinterested with a lot of like much newer games. There's a, I don't know, I just, I just see a lot of the stuff, I'm like, my interest in playing it doesn't push me enough to want to just buy the console and play it now. And then the problem is if I wait long enough, well, they're not going to be on sale in any way, and people just forget about them. That seems to be the case. I don't know. But let's not forget about this one. A classic. A classic that I have never actually owned or played until quite a handful of years ago. Oh, we're going to spoil the game. We're going to spoil the game. Don't do it. Don't enter the demo mode. Uh, this- oh! He's gonna offer promotion! Thank you, ta- Do I dare even read the name out loud? I feel like just saying those words in sequence is like YouTuber trap right there. Wow, the price is lower! Already being advertised to? I haven't even started the first cutscene. But welcome to the third Spyro game. I had played the first two Spyro games so much as a kid. Uh, so quite a number of times on the channel before, but I never played Spyro 3 until like 2016. Um, I, I had Enter the Dragonfly, I knew that that was not a great game. Spoilers, 117%. You can pick an icon, just like Spyro uh, Enter the Dragonfly later. Let's pick the Rhinoc. And let's sit back, enjoy quite a handful of cutscenes. Uh, this game starts off with a bit of an expo uh, exposition, shall we? Um... Well, it's not really an exposition as much as just... It's stuff happening, and usually Spyro doesn't have a ton of stuff happening, but, uh... This one does. It's a bit more plot. Oh my gosh. Why, well, yes, let me just leave my eggs just right around me. Granted, I can think of worse places to put them. I assume dragon eggs are very tough. Very hard. Like, you, you can't accidentally, like, crack them. You gotta really, like, go at them. <laughs> Squish. <laughs> Dumb. And there we go. <laughs> That's a cutscene. That's a go. A powerful villain emerges. We managed to capture the eggs, your highness. Every last one. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Maybe you will amount to something after all. Now, go guard the tunnels. Stop anyone from coming through. Dude, I, I assume it's still Stuart Copeland is doing like all these like weird little jingles like that. Um, Stuart Copeland, drummer for the police, still doing Spyro. Well, not to this day, but at least three games in a row. Where are the eggs? The holes came out on the other side of the Dragon Worlds. We found some of the eggs, but they were too heavy to carry back. The other side of the world? The Forgotten Worlds. Spyro, 
You'll have to go. Nobody else can fit down the holes. Yeah, come on, let's go! No one is tiny. Sparrow is the one dragon that's like Gen X, like in the middle. Find the eggs and bring them back, Spyro. You're our only chance. You got it. Also, it's still Tom Kenny. Just want to add. This one's got a lot of similarities with Spyro 2 uh, at the end of the day. Uh, and there we go. That's, a, that's our plot exposition. I hope you appreciate that. Someone stole the eggs. We gotta get the eggs. Easy. Uh, no, we're on vacation. None, none of this, like, caboodles. Well, I guess it is still like a Spyro 1 scenario. Uh, but yeah. Uh, other than that, it's uh, it's a lot like Spyro 2, in, you know, the UI is very similar, Spyro sort of moves around the same, but he doesn't have the, the charge jumping glitch that he does. He's got all the abilities from Spyro 2, including the uh, the wall climbing, which comes up a couple of times, and the head butting, which comes up a couple of times. Uh, the swimming, which definitely comes up soon-ish. We got those uh, jaws with the, uh, the mystical butterflies. Uh, but unlike orbs from Spyro 2, we collect dragon eggs. It'll probably be about like five or six in a level, uh, with a total of 150 to collect. Which sounds like a ton, given that there are only like 64 orbs in Spyro 2. Uh, but you'll find a lot like that where it's like, they're just, they're just freebies, they're just around. They'll give you them. Other than that though, we still got our whole... You know, world with portals ordeal. There are four worlds. Uh, we'll see how many streams this takes. So you're the one in charge of rescuing the eggs, huh? <laughs> in charge. How sad. Look here, dragon. If you know what's good for you, you'll turn around and crawl back up that hole you came through. Those eggs belong to us now, and I've hidden them in places you'll never I find in a thousand years. I stole them, therefore they're mine. Besides, even if you could find an egg, our expertly trained armies will dispose <laughs> of you and take it back. Do I make myself clear? If I find you here again, I am going to be very angry. And you won't like me when I'm angry. Oh, and then she exploded. Uh, let's explore around the hub and let's get our, our bearings to start off. Speaking of bear, there's one right over there. Um, uh, but yep, that is Bianca, our current villain. Although you know that she's got a, a head honcho chilling in the wings. Spyro! My, my, how funny to see you here. Why, I haven't seen you since we defeated Ripto in Avalar. <laughs> and I haven't well, heard you since, uh, you, left, so I you came apparently here replaced the United nice deal with the Liberty Paper Guy. Lovely woman she is. Seems to be very fond of dragons, too. Ooh. The sorceress has asked me to guard Sheila the Kangaroo. I suppose if you had a bit more money, I'd be willing to let her escape. Then you could keep her for a pet or something. Are you telling me I can't own slaves? I'm too poor for slaves? <sighs> Life is a bit cruel, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, let's explore around a bit more. Here's Hunter going to give us the lowdown on pressing the X I just button. Found one of those portal thingamajigs that leads to a different world, but you'll have to glide to get across. You'll have to glide. I can't, press I can't the, do the X voice. button to jump. Then press the <laughs> I'll X try it again, again later. while you're in the air to glide. Just follow me. Just follow me. Okay, sure. And then they proceed to like tempt you a little bit because they put some gems over here on the side. So you go for them, and then you just see Hunter like just bounces back as if I apparently can't jump. Whoops. <laughs> it's a great example right there. To get the best glide, press the X button at the very top of your jump. You ever think it's weird that like the Spyro games legitimately just call it the X button and not the cross button? I saw something shiny in that cave over there. Let's go check it out. You can get there by hovering. To hover, just press the triangle button at the end of your glide. There is a lot of talking in this game as well, and I don't think we'll ever truly get away from that. I didn't, I did not need to hover for that one. Oh, I almost forgot. I found this egg. Found this egg. Whoa. Uh, every egg, every dragon, baby dragon has a name. So if you ever feel like you wanted to know the name, so there you go. We got two. We're getting there. We're making some progresso. This is a super fly power up, Spyro. Whenever you walk through any power-up that looks like this one, it will allow you to fly for a while. Uh, so yep, the portal or the power-up gates from Spyro 2 come back. Uh, 
pretty much I think the only thing that you're going to find that isn't from Spyro 2 is that the enemies drop, uh... Oh, sorry, sorry. The, the one thing that isn't Spyro 2 that isn't going to uh, show up in this game is that the enemies will drop gems again like they did in Spyro 1. Whereas uh, in Spyro 2 they had the the soul crystals, the soul gate, soul things. So these power-ups would never be active until you had enough enemies defeated. But here it's like, uh, just, just throw them in. Like it's a weird bit of backtracking. Now if you're pro enough you would have uh, not been able to look up, but you could totally like see just here. A little bit of a hole here, and uh, one of the one of the little dragon eggs is chilling up here. Amy, Amy, very, very nice. There's also a ledge up there. I feel like I gotta be very gutsy to get up there, but it's just for it's just for a life. So we still got some more gems to collect. Uh, I think all the levels in this first hub, um, we got some high gem counts in this game. Yeah, all the gem, all the levels in this first hub. I mm. think I have. Oh, no, I think the hubs all have 400, but then, like, the actual levels have, like, 500. Yeah, it's a kind of, like, there's a very high number of gems in this game. Um, because I think it stops at, like, 15,000 in the end. Very high. Um, other than that, you know, it's, uh, it's the same rules. What stops you from walking into every level? Well, this guy will I'm tell you. I'm late for a dinner party at the Tiki Lodge, and the portal to my home just stopped working. Maybe the portal will reactivate after a few more dragons hatch. Me, me when I, I forget my keys. Oh, maybe maybe I need to hatch more dragon eggs. Uh, we are these rocks. There you go. Just remember, you can you can indeed ground pound them. Shout out to all the lambs out there. You cry babies. Apparently, this represents every lamb. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm I'm kind of surprised I never did get around to playing this one. Um, game camera is when I was younger, I, 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 I can't fully explain it, uh, given that I played other Spyro games, and I feel like you know used PS1 collections are probably not too bad. I can change the game Back then, yeah, maybe it was hard to find in Australia. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, I I hope you all appreciate the timing of playing Spyro Year of the Dragon right on Chinese New Year. For the year I of the dragon, egg at the bottom uh, of this lake. I would go get that it, egg is but drowning. I want to get my fur all wet. Maybe you could get it. You can dive underwater by pressing the square button when you're on the surface, and charge underwater by holding down the square button. Don't even need to mention that you can hold X to like swim just slightly forward. There we go. Is another egg, bros. They named the shark in Finding Nemo after this one. Uh, that's all five eggs on this level. Not really that bad, and pretty much all the hubs are just going to be hubs. You go around, there's going to be levels. Um, we miss the days of Spyro 1 where the hubs will legitimately try to kill you and sort of be levels in their own. But on the flip side, the levels in this game are generally big. I guess that's, that's, a, that's a plus. Uh, so if we go up onto this ledge... Here I was, about to go for a nice swim at Shell Beach, and my portal just disappeared right in front of me. If you go find some more of those dragon eggs, I bet this portal will turn on again. That, that, that's usually the case, I guess, right now. Um, so you may be wondering as well, what is, uh, what exactly stops you from beating the game? What is the actual required thing to do? Uh, obviously getting through each world, uh, which requires actually plowing through each level. Then a character We'll just casually be chilling at the end, uh, which we'll, we'll walk to in a hot second. Um, it's just over there, in there. Uh, if you've gotten to the end of every level, there'll be a character from every level in there. And if you've done all of them, then you can go forward. But you can't go into every level until you've got enough dragon eggs. So. There's also the sign here. We'll, we'll look into that sign in a little bit. I should be able to have enough time, maybe, to stream. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, we can't do anything in there just yet. Uh, so I'm missing a handful of gems. And, uh, I'm gonna hope... There's like a fiver just chilling around here, but... This is my problem with, uh... Me not having played this one a ton. But let's just have a second look over there, because I know I went a bit quick. Um, this is my problem with me not having played this game a ton, is that I will... Uh... Take my sweet time getting gems, but that's okay. Because, uh... 
like this oh there you go this game feels like very second nature because it is more spyro and it feels like a very natural progression still compared to the other spyro so now with the level complete you may be thinking okay what's the first thing to do well uh you don't get abilities in this game but unlocking these creatures grants you access to side areas in the other levels so you might as well start off with unlocking the creature a fortune to keep sheila the kangaroo locked up <laughs> the pesky animal must have been causing a lot of trouble for that poor sorceress. I suppose I could accidentally let the kangaroo escape if you were to pay me, say, a small fee. A small fee. Ah, Spyro. Also, I yes, this character is indeed day. one of the characters Your you need in order to access the boss. Someday, also, what is this? Being, it's making me rich. <laughs> my naivety might be my downfall. <laughs> Hmm. Also, we got a nice little cutscene for every character. Bit of personality with them. And they talk. Uh, <laughs> I hope you appreciate this favor I'm doing in letting you out. As good of you, mate. No hard feelings, eh? Right. Hey, After in it, all, a boot. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Still holding on to the money. I reckon you'd be one of them dragons then. Yeah, name's Spyro. Never thought I'd see one. You dragons used to rule this entire world, you know. Then all of a sudden you left. Poof. Dragons used to live Poof. here? Didn't you know? They say it was over a thousand years ago, I think. And they just left? They yeah. said it. And the weird thing is, after they left, all the magic in the world just sort of went with them. I mean, they say this world used to have magic coming out the wazoo. Flying ships, singing forests, wishing stones, you name it. But when the dragons left, it all just dried up. Is that why some of the portals don't work? Yeah, they're starting to fade out too, one by one. Well, I gotta get back home and do some damage control. Come visit any time you like. So every single one of these characters has their own level that you're not, uh, like, I mean, you are required to do, but you're not required to do immediately after you, you open up the, uh, the portal, which I think is... Sorry, after you, you you pay money bags, basically. Also, we're 17 minutes in. I haven't even gone to a level yet. Wow. Wowzers. Wowie. Uh, we're a bit short on change, but don't worry. We'll be buying some or getting some... Buying some more, yes. Let me get my V-Bucks out. Thanks again, Spyro. Now I have to find out what that nasty sorceress has done to my home while I was locked up. That sounds like a person from Prague, not Australia. But close enough. Hiya, Sheila. Hiya, you Sheila. Are gone, a bunch of Reinachs kicked us out of our houses. It's okay, though. Bobby, Pete, and I are working on a clever plan to take them back. Oh, hey. So, uh, yeah. So instead of getting more abilities, uh, the gimmick with the game, or somewhat, is uh, you get these little side characters that you'll control now, for Bobby various Pete sections. They are using your air harp. Your air hop. Easy, just press the X button again at the top of your jump. Uh, and all these characters sort of play a bit differently. Sheila's probably going to be the most normal one. Uh, but she's got pretty much two things. She can double jump, although you'll see that she definitely slows down. She's got a kick. That's about it. She's got a kick. And, uh, she'll do this thing where if you hit X at the bottom of the jump, uh, she'll bounce up very high. And, uh, that's pretty much how you go about it. I think you can you can still do your first person look, but I don't think there's anything to be gained with that right now. Uh, you'll see a lot of- oh, I You think. can get up really steep cliffs like this one with your double jump! With your press double the jump! To jump and press it again exactly when you hit the ground to do the double jump! Once you've mastered it, you can go anywhere you want! <laughs> Except the- you'll notice that, uh, she's a lot slower. She's a lot slower in the air horizontally so you got to keep an eye out for these little high ledges as well but uh, yeah they're gonna throw some 25 gems all over the shop because uh this level's got 500 gems and it's not too big if anything i think these levels are probably a little smaller than uh, uh the typical last. level yeah i was saving this to make an omelet but i think you deserve it more oh thanks man thanks ruby 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 ah! <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. But yeah, I mean, it's Spyro the Dragon. You know? It's a very classic collectathon. I don't think uh, you could really botch up the, the, the formula too hard. 
He knocked Billy clean through a wall. If you don't mind, we'll just hang out here while you give him a good kicking. Good kicking. Thank you. Whoops. Whoops. We'll make the jump. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really too sure why I never really played this one as a kid. So I'll just chalk it up to, uh, just, yeah, maybe it was expensive at the time. Um, but definitely, uh, this game, uh, very, very well received at the time. And I would still say is, should still well be received, I guess. I don't, I don't know how to phrase it, but the Reignited Trilogy, uh, was not quite my first, uh, experience with this game, but I definitely felt like they had the most kind of uh, ability to show some love with that one a bit more. I think the first game is enough perfection and doesn't really have too many bits that really need remastering, but there's always uh, a lot of ambition with the, the second and third games by throwing lots and lots and lots of different little side mechanics all over the shop, uh, something that they definitely keep doing with all these Ratchet and Clank games as well. Um, so if anything, I guess, like, me playing Ratchet & Clank later, which maybe one day we'll get around to that, um, definitely makes a lot more sense how their level design Barely. works. I just keep kicking this rock until it breaks! Or rather, how their, how their mindset with approaching levels goes. Um, yeah, oh, no, 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 I'm gonna need to get out of here. Hey, Sheila, let's play a joke. Take this egg and smash it on Billy's house, okay? I need to get him back for the last time he butted me off the cliff. I guess just like Spyro 2, everyone is a jerk. Everyone. And that's okay. Just like me being a jerk about, uh... Well, I think I've had a conversation about the yellow paint before. Uh, it's a, it's a kind of annoying trend in the modern games. Uh, mm, annoying-ish. have taken over! There'll be no stopping them unless we can smash the huts! The huts are too big to smash with your kick smash attack, the hut. So try using your stomp attack to smash them instead. I'll confuse them with taunting while you stomp the huts, okay? You remember how to stomp, don't you? Just jump, then press the triangle button in the air. Now, it's kind of... <laughs> do you see here that the subtitle stopped after the, the taunting line? You remember how to stomp, don't you? And then just he just jump. says this again. <laughs> I just think that's a little weird that that's the case in the, in the dialogue, but sure. Um, but anyway, I didn't end this level, so... Uh, so the yellow paint, uh, which I, I guess, does it have a controversy page on Know You Meme? I think it's not, like, that significant of a problem that, like, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it is, like, games are trying to be, uh... too inclusive. That's a, that's a, that's a dangerous phrase, but, like, as in... There should be a degree of people should understand game design uh, after uh, how do I how do I phrase it? Because I was gonna <laughs> the way I was gonna say it sounds very elitist. Um, uh, how about let me just dive into the problem. The problem is uh, there's uh, screenshots and uh, some demo footage of uh, the new Final Fantasy VII uh, remake part two. They're because they're spreading it out of the multiple games that all cost seventy bucks or a hundred. 110 over here? It's, it's pretty high. It's kind of high. Um, and uh, in one of the parts, uh, there's part of Final Fantasy VII when you climb across a uh, cliff wall. In the uh, PS1 game, it's just a bunch of arrows. Just select which arrow you want to go to, and that's where you go to. In this one, they've got a contextual section where you climb up a cliffside, uh, I assume with some kind of platforming or very similar mechanic, except uh, they painted the tops of every single cliff face uh, yellow. Like a very bright yellow, like someone just took a bright yellow paint bucket, just went whoosh, straight over it. Uh, the criticism here is that, uh, well, two things. One, uh, is it a bit if you ever forget demeaning? How to control a character or is, it, is, is, is it a bit demoralizing when it's like, okay, clearly I can't tell that I need to go up and I need to have someone just slather paint, pointing up. Just telling me, I gotta go up that way. Um... And, uh, and then number two is, uh, what's the world reason? Because as we start making games more and more realistic and we start making games have more and more kinds of mechanics in them, uh, you know, unless you can properly explain and sort of telegraph the jumping stuff, uh, where in this game, hey, it's still fine because map geometry is pretty clear and obvious. 
but as we made games more realistic it's like well the things you can uh you know interact with start becoming a bit blurred uh that i would say stems from a very very deep issue of games need to explain the mechanics and be consistent and they're generally not as they've gotten longer and longer uh, and also adding more mechanics, because obviously when you don't have that many mechanics, it's very straightforward. Adventure games have always had this problem. Uh, it's a very straightforward level, you just kind of jump around, so. Uh, your, your bonus characters, your side characters do not go to the portals. So it doesn't look like that effect is there, but trust me, that effect is still there. Although, it's like Spyro 2, where uh, uh, we've got like hard cuts to black. You know, the Spyro 1 effect of just going straight from one place into the next. A little bit lost on here, but that's okay. Let's go into the uh, the more proper first level because it's right off the bat the sunny villa. It's sunny, it's a villa. It's like a beach, summer forest. Also, no intro cutscenes. Oh my, oh my, uh, can you help us? Hordes of ferocious Rhinox have overrun our town and kidnapped the mayor. The mayor. <laughs> So yeah, we don't get the beginning cutscenes. Uh, spot these flowers around, by the way. You're gonna need to... I think, actually, it's the trees. We got skill points just like Spyro 2. There are 20, and uh, none of them are trivial, I think. They're all involving uh, actual things in actual levels. So you're gonna need to figure them out. Uh, the first one exists in this level, where you'll need to flame every single bush. Let me catch my breath and or I'll tree. Kick that I think trees. Butt. I shall kick this guy's butt. But, like the first level, they're gonna have scaredy cat enemies. I also like how a lot of uh, these NPCs you can come back to and they'll say something we different. show those two bullies! If they hadn't outnumbered me two to one, I'd have finished them off ages ago! <laughs> I, I appreciate that. The music is a vibe in this game, and to some extent, like, I don't know, for me, who hasn't played this one for uh, as much time as the others, I think it actually is the best soundtrack of the bunch got enough like effects and filters and things going on um, they keep getting better as they go along and I think that's just because there's more variety that's pretty much it and that guitar sound is just well oh, timeless this Rhinoc is too big now we're gonna to tell you about the big enemies we'll have to flame him using the circle you don't have button. to flame him oh my gosh <laughs> at least they keep it short spooks a lot of the dudes around they may have shields, but yeah, no, <laughs> no match. No match. Uh, but yeah, I like. I do think that the yellow paint thing is a bit, um, you know, demoralizing because for me as a player, I want to feel like I'm smart and I've solved the puzzle. And I've definitely felt a big problem with a lot of the AAA games where um, I'm not actually solving the game. I'm just kind of pressing some buttons to continue onwards. Uh, that is a very reductionist mindset, but it is somewhat true, is it not? Greetings, Year of the Dragon! It is! It, Year of the Dragon! I timed this. I had this queued up in my head since, uh, end of 2022. I'd played Spyro 1 and I said, oh dang, I got a quick fast Spyro 2. Because I think I played Spyro 1, like, in June or July of 2022. So I've sort of been playing them a little bit more frequently than annually. It's a little bit more frequently. We got some fun little bits at the top here as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I love how every 12 years, that's when the Zodiac calendar, uh, you know, not not resets, but like when it when it loops back. Um, uh, let's go into this area right now, by the way. Here is one side area. We've got two of them in this level. This is what makes the levels feel a lot larger than they actually are. There are Rhinox everywhere. Maybe I can find some peace and quiet at the top of the tower. At the top of the tower. Uh, but yeah, this is what makes the levels feel a lot larger, is that you don't exactly hit a loading screen. I have lost my love, guarded by evil Rhinox at the top of yonder tower. Can you rescue her for me? Can you rescue her? Yeah, you don't exactly hit a loading screen, although the screen does go black for a, a second and a half. Uh, but it's pretty quick. Also, actual enemies, whoa. Um, but yeah, this area would be closed off if you don't have the bonus character. So if you haven't unlocked Sheila, this area is closed. Well, you can't go in here, and then you can't 100% the level. There's going to be a couple of levels where, um, I think there's one in every hub, where the character you unlock is in the next hub. So you gotta kind of go back for them. Um, but I'll do my best to show off the levels uh, while I can, and then we'll see if I can got enough time to go back for the, the 
levels again. For the pre Oops. Oops. The only thing with uh, all these side characters is that the music's the same every time you use them. Which means you're gonna hear this theme a little bit more than some of the, you know, more iconic music, I guess. But in general, it's pretty alright. This jumping is pretty neat though, because especially Spyro is a very horizontal game, and suddenly it's like, oh, there's just a bunch of bizarre verticality. And it works, I guess. Other than the camera is uh, a bit close to see what's going on for the most part, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, oh yeah, I keep forgetting that there's a ledge right there. Whoa! <laughs> okay, that was a bit of a gutsy one. But yeah, I keep forgetting that there's this. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, it leads over to this little back area with a bunch of uh, pots. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, no, the, um, yeah, the... Like, I want to be able to solve games, and I don't mind a game making me stuck. I bought the game. Like, to some degree, there's no obligation that the game has to be so baby easy that I, like, automatically beat it. I feel like game designers should be a little more, um, I guess, daring to make their games a bit more challenging. Like, not, not like a bit more challenging, but just like, just don't, don't keep going automatic on me. Make me figure out things, you know? Like, don't, don't explain everything. Elden Ring's a good example. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, people can beat Dark Souls, people can beat Elden Ring, and they don't have to be amazing at games, but they just have to be persistent and just learn it. And then they get better over time. Um, and if people don't learn it over time, then they need more patience, and then they will learn it eventually. I guess some people will just give up. That's natural. And yet, yeah, people love it. People love Elden Ring for being that kind of game. And so it's it's bizarre to me when uh, you know, like when we see the, the the yellow paint discussion, and you'll see some people dismissively go, "It's an accessibility option." Which one? It's not an option when it's the level design. Uh, but also, it's, uh, it's, like, why? Why am I just seeing yellow paint? What? I'm gonna I go excessive on this one. I've got a restraining order against him. Nice. <laughs> yeah, each one of these side areas will always hide, uh, one, or well, sometimes two dragon eggs. But they'll always have some worth. Uh, unfortunately, you have to sort of gauge the, the levels back over here. It's not too bad, but... Ah, uh, oh, dang it. If only I had jumped on the correct side of the wall. Oops. We gotta make our way back. There's actually a button here that says exit area if you wanted to as well, but we're gonna we're gonna put in the time and walk back. Uh, this is also the part of the, the level where you hope you did pick up everything, because uh, if you miss the gem in this area, it's not the easiest to see that it was this area you missed it in. But, hey, uh, you know. We can definitely 100% this level. Just need to keep trying. So, do, do the trees reset? Ah, the trees did reset. I was thinking that in the back of my mind. I was like, do they? Okay, well, I gotta remind me, I gotta go around and hit all the trees again. Uh, but yeah, no, it feels a little... Like, I don't know. I, th I think games should be okay with filtering out their players a bit more. Um, uh, a lot of people in uh, the... Uh, whenever I see people say, oh, it's a controversy, it's like, oh, it's just Twitter people getting into heated debates. And then it gets tons of likes, because people don't opine, they just like and it's shared immediately. That's okay, but uh, is it a controversy? I think it is a very, very different opinion, and I don't agree with the people who think that the yellow paint is, like, the way level design should work, because, I don't know, I play, like, Doom 20... Doom? Doom 2016, I think, is fine, because there is a world reason why there's, like, you know, green lights on all the ledges. Hi, I assume Spyro. it's because they're all, like, scaffolding and that's, you, like you know, so something mm -hmm. useful, something utilitarian in the world. That means your progress is saved. But then in Tomb Raider 2013, for example, I love how I get to say two, like, reboot games as well, as the, the, the harbingers of the trend. I love how some people would, like, cite God of War 2018, um, and we're counting a Final Fantasy VII remake. It's like, hmm, there seems to be no new games. I love that moment, by the way. <laughs> it just runs through. That chicken is destroyed. He's evaporated. Ooh. 
but yeah, isn't it weird that they're all remake games? Ooh, I'm a dizzy. Thanks, man. <laughs> Getting chased by one guy. One guy is all it takes. Are you okay, my man? You good? You good? Thanks for the help, but I think I would have worn him down in a minute. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, I don't know, ultimately at the end of the day, like, does it matter that players played through the game entirely? And the answer is, a little bit. And I think it's because it's actually a secret underhanded way of getting players Thank you to for not play my other games As by well, their competitors. I you with one of our famous giant chicken eggs. By making sure that players stick around for longer. They, and it's not that they're finding the game fun, it's that they're finding the game rewarding. Which is not exactly fun, and that's a, that's a dangerous pitfall, because that's what leads us into predatory practices. Even if it's for a game that's already out. That was the ugliest chicken I've ever seen! Aww. Even if it's for a game that's already, like, done. Yeah, thanks. Sneaky AAA companies. That, it is a very sneaky play. Is it necessarily? I don't know if that's actually the case. Like, I am applying a bit of malice onto, onto um, you know, something that doesn't exactly have an explanation. But 100%, like, games don't need to be this long. But why are they this long? Because you don't need that in order to justify your games getting more expensive. Is this the last tree? No? Oh, wait, there's one more tree, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, the newest quadruple A game. Skull and Bones, aka the, the game they started working on after Assassin's Creed 4 came out in 2013. They took that mode, started making it bigger and bigger, which I completely, you know, am all for the practice. Then it was delayed, 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 and now it's finally out, uh, either this week or last week or next week. Um, this is a jump and a half. This is the first Spyro level. The first, like... What do we gotta have going on? You just gotta spot with this, this crazy jump. Same thing if your Call of Duty Warzone being too big because they don't properly compress it. That is also true, yeah. So if you're a console player, yes, yes, that is, that is 100% a fair point. I, I, I think it is like a little bit like of a byproduct. I don't think it's, it's that they don't, uh, they don't prioritize it. The games are just push it out, push it out, because it's not a problem if the install is big enough. And yeah, freaking 100 gig patches, like, I'm okay with, with that as, like, I can feasibly do it myself, but I know that the average person won't want to do that, and even for me, it's like, on gigabit Hi, connection, Spyro. what is that? I found this gladiator 800 training arena, seconds, and it makes still a pretty cool skate 10 minutes park. for a patch is kind of long when it catches you off guard. Skills. And yeah, it's positive for them. Like, there's no reason to not do it. I bet you can't Until it's too big. In the same way as the VRAM argument. The video will just be just like, hey, back, you know, you it sells better graphics master. cards. And people buy the games anyways, apparently, even if it runs like trash. Uh, skateboarding! Just want to add. So we skate around and we gotta defeat all the recycled enemies from the first level in Spyro 2. There's also a ton of gems, which we'll try and... Pick them all up as we can. Just download more RAM. Oh, exactly. But yeah, I, I don't know. Like, uh, like uh, we are in a bit of a world where like the the games are too big and they're not made to like an ideal perfection. And I completely get that. Like, you know, if we, if we do that for everything, then things will take forever. We'll legit have skull and bones out for like in 2050. It will take forever. Um, but yeah, Skull and Bones seems like a bit of a meme game to me, not because, uh, like, you know, some people were complaining about the, uh, the mechanics. I haven't looked into the mechanics enough to truly know whether it's like, oh boy. Uh, but the phrase quadruple A makes me laugh because, is that implying that the budget was insane? Is it a missed opportunity? It was, because they should have been capitalizing off a game that had come out, like, just then. Skull and Bones should have been like a standalone pirate ship follow-up that came out in 2015. Because there's no way that a game like that needs to take that long to come out. And yeah, it changed too too much. It keeps changing hands, and then eventually it's a shell of its original concept. And I'm not saying games 
don't change and like too much. There's definitely some games like um uh I wanna say um Half-Life Alex was sort of like floating in the wings for quite a while until 2020 was sort of the right time technology-wise to start pushing it out. Um and there's definitely a lot of cut concepts that are in that game. Um but I guess the difference is uh it generally works better to just commit. Just go for it. Don't second guess. Game design is not something that actually, like, not a lot of people do benefit from second guessing. Your gut feeling and the things that you find are fun right off the bat. Very, very true. Uh, they could decide with just the pirate stuff making it um, cheaper than AC4. And yeah, yeah, that was around the time when Ubisoft was making things like Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon and, uh, like, um, Paul Juarez Gunslinger. Like, there are a bunch of games that aren't full price games, and they're definitely not the same size, but with the same quality, at least. Short and sweet. That was a very, very cool concept. The question is, will it still sell poorly? I don't, I don't, I think, I don't know why. There's a lot of games that just default. They will just sell somewhat. I don't know how. Like, who's buying Skull and Bones? Who's been like, ah, oh, yeah, I was excited way back when, and I'm finally picking it up. There we go, 400 gem redos. Uh, where's our last, our last boy? He's probably, like, chilling out over here somewhere. Yeah. I'm, I don't think I'll ever be able to fully explain, like, why some games still sell crazy amounts. Uh, or why some games don't sell enough, but definitely game budgets are so all over the shop that like Skull and Bones could still make a profit if they just legit like didn't have a very big team and So because if you have like triple the size of the team Then you would have a third of the time in order to release for the same budget uh, roughly. Grandma's for the grandkids hey, because it says the latest coolest pirate game and while you were boarding I found this in a lizard burrow well, the other, the other, the other problem is, uh, you know, can we even go back to games ten years ago? Because although I do know, I guess Assassin's Creed right. Four well, is on sale, so there's the that. But um, out, uh, did you spot the news that Spec Ops: The Line I has been taken be down? A twelve-year-old game. It's not gonna be easy, though. It's not gonna be easy. I'm only gonna give you this egg if you can <laughs> do the skateboard challenge. Oh, yeah, damn, and I know that one's probably just for like music mm. licensing, which is the same reason lots of games uh, are taken off sale. Um, so now we're gonna get all the lizards in three minutes, which is the same locations as before, and I picked up all the gems, so it's not gonna take as long as time. It's kind of interesting that they, uh, do two challenges like this. Also, yeah, like, the skateboarding mechanic comes up, uh... Why is it three times? I think it's three times. I think you get three skateboarding challenges in the game. But it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, first level, there you go. Um, so, we're, we're lucky right now that Assassin's Creed 4 is still on sale, and people can, and probably should. If you never did play Assassin's Creed 4, um, maybe go back and play it. I should go back and play it. But, like, what is the point? And, and all these big AAA games need to ask themselves this question. What is the point of the new game? when an old game does it better for cheaper. Like, I guess, I guess the way this works is a lot of people just want their new fix. And to be honest, like, I'm guilty of that as well. Here am I, I'm like, I'm playing Spyro 3 and be like, yeah, you know, if they just release like more levels for Spyro 3, I'd be down for that. I mean, it's gotta be good. It's gotta have the same vibe, the same spirit, but You know what I mean? It's like the, uh, like... Oh, and you gotta do it without falling off the board, sorry. Aw, oh, too bad. Maybe you'll do better this time. Thanks for condescending me, Hunter. Same reason we love Super Mario Galaxy 2, even though one exists. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a very, very fair comparison. Um, also, to me, it's like... And, uh, we're still waiting on Nintendo to potentially re-release Galaxy 2. It has different mechanics, but I no, I completely get what you mean. In the same way as like, you know, like I, I'm not I'm not seeking, you know, well, I'm not exclusively saying this has to be a level pack. It's like no, it can be like, oh, dang it. 
Um, Nintendo does hate money, yeah. Oh. I, I think it's it's less Nintendo hates money and it's more Nintendo doesn't scale. So they, like, I mean, I know they have bigger studios than they've ever had, but like, that's the reason why Zelda is a franchise that now takes six years to come out with a new release, as opposed to, uh, like, because they, they don't they don't have anywhere near the the scale of the the dev teams that uh you know other big AAA games that release more regularly will do. Um, uh, you guess whether that's a oh my gosh, I should stop doing that. I should really stop doing that. You guess whether that's a, a good. Um, they didn't release Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah, that is true. I like Galaxy Two not being on the Switch. I feel like it was a very missed opportunity. I think, uh, go back to my videos from way back when, when 3D All-Stars came out, and I would have said, oh, they're probably just going to do it as, like, DLC. And they proceeded to not. Uh, I can't think of a technical reason. Yeah, I, I can't think of a technical reason why Galaxy 2 doesn't exist, because they're both run on the Wii. The Wii's got the same hardware. In theory, Galaxy 1, which already was ported to the, uh, to the, um, Infinity Shield, by the way, so this is a very, very trivial port on their end. Um, like, what, what special things do they have to figure out in order to get, to, or get Galaxy 2 to work? There's obviously no more mechanics as well, like, in terms of controllers, I'm sure. I don't know. It's a very, it's a very weird one. Um, also, Nintendo hates money because they're charging people for an online service when they could just charge people again for virtual console titles. Like, just buying them. Although, I guess how many people want to buy NES games these days? You just get, like, one bundle and you call it. Uh, oh, I did go up here. Oh, and there's one in the middle, I saw him. Oh no, why do I keep doing this? No. I spend all my time on skateboarding. Trouble with the skateboard, eh? But, yeah, yeah. Uh, quadruple A is such a funny term because that would actually mean that this game costs more, right? Like, this is the. Is, is Skull and Bones the most expensive game ever to be released, at least we'll just say. Um, I feel like there's tons of game ideas that probably do get somewhat developed and then scrapped. I definitely know there's tons of that in the same way as uh, um, we had in the news the... Uh, I second guess I was like, oh, do I go left? Oh. Look at, look at that, look at that. Um, we had in the news the, uh, was it the Wile E. Coyote moody, uh, movie? <laughs> I'm moody about it. Um, that movie, um, for quite a while, we, we'd known it had been, like, shelved or something. It was very strange. It's like, it's a finished movie, but they're not willing to put in the money to market and properly release it. They've just made a movie, and it's just sitting there. And, uh, they did this, the, the auction. They were like, hey, okay, who wants to buy Wile E. Coyote movie? It's ready, all you gotta do is, like, produce, like, just distribute it. And no one is doing it. <laughs> Everyone, no one bid it for it. Everyone was like, eh, eh. And it could be okay. It could be an okay movie. I assume they probably know more than, than we do from an outsider perspective. But it's like, this is a project that is going to completely disappear. It will, it will be shelved. You will never see it unless someone backs it up right now and releases it on archive.org in like 10 years under a pseudonym. Uh, which, uh, legally, uh, you shouldn't do that, by the way, that's technically piracy. But, like, legit, like, people work hard on Thing, and I want to see Thing, I want to see how the sausage is made, and I'm clearly not, like, you know, infringing on, like, technology and invention, and clearly it's attributed, so you can't just base a movie off it just because you can easily, readily- What did I just hit? What did I just hit? I hit the- the- oh. <laughs> I hit a triangle, I hit a, a vertex, no. The one time I actually had it and it was like, nah, not today. Watch that uh, in a future stream when I do the next skateboarding challenges, I have like no troubles. I'm just gonna practice, do my grinding. I also like it, you can 
<laughs> do what I did just there and hit them with the skateboard itself. It's a little more entertaining than uh, just spitting rocks at them, I'll tell you that. Also, me when I go like, you know, yellow paint is world immersion breaking unless you give an explanation. Also, me, Spyro on a skateboard. <laughs> So my brain works in mysterious ways. You don't have to comprehend it, and neither do I. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I don't know. I don't understand the AAA industry quite as much as uh, maybe they do. Uh, and I don't understand the, the consumer base quite as much, because, yeah, these games will sell. Uh, and I don't really know how. But uh, what, was the, what was the original, like... I, I, I was mentioning something. Yellow paint, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just in general, like... Like, I would prefer just games to not be like Battle Pass schmores and that kind of stuff. And look, there was another egg in the lizard burrow. Whoa! Oh, tubular! <laughs> Hi, I'm Daisy. Oh my gosh. And that's all the eggs, but uh, here's a fun thing as well. You can ask Hunter. And you he'll can be like, go for the course record now if you want. Whenever you hop on a skateboard, a timer will start. Score as many points as you can until the timer expires or you wipe out. Good luck! Now, this is a, a bonus, but it is there for- Oh my gosh, hi there. I did not disable the, uh, the, uh, the retro <laughs> overlay. Whoops. I thought I did. Uh, anyway, you can skateboard around and try to get some sick points. Let me see if I can do it. I think the... what's... what is the record? Oh my gosh. Not bad, that's not the record. There you go, we'll try and get some more. Eh. I know you can do some real sick jumps off the, uh, off the big turn over there, so we'll try and get those. Whoops. Uh, what's the score I'm going for? I think it actually is like, it's either like 8,000 or 12,000. Eh. I'm glad that that counted as one flip. And yes, there is like, you can see that there's the uh, hole, there you go. You go a little faster after doing a good trick, so it's like, Tony Hawk. Is it like Tony Hawk? Yeah, Tony Hawk does that, where it's like, you gotta do a trick to go faster. Ah, oh, I gotta get my three rights. My four rights, rather. Nah. Again, four rights there. Um, we'll see what the record is, but I'm... I gotta, I gotta do it for the, for the skill points. I gotta practice my skateboarding. Thrash Master! Oops. Oh. Well. All right. What's the score I'm going for? Oh, there's my there's my overlay again. Thirty-two hundred. Oh, I could actually do that in an instant. Hello, overlay again. How you doing? At least you can also give up from the menu and just try it again. So very nice. Oh, yeah, 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 because, like, I think, uh, Tony Hawk, um... Well, I guess Tony Hawk 2 would have been out, so it's, like, definitely the granddaddy. But not the, like... Not the insane amounts of, like, other skateboarding games. Yeah, I think this is definitely, like, capitalizing on that recent trend. Oh, I tried, I tried. Yeah, I don't think we would have had skateboarding in... But, like, I mean, Tony Hawk brought it back in, like... Not just the games, but also, like... Like, it sort of became cool again. It was, like... Just kind of a thing at a moment. But I, I... I don't know. I think that's, like... If anything as well, like, this is a fun cultural moment. Why on earth does Spyro the Dragon have skateboarding? 
because of this. It's because of this exact reason. Because skateboarding is cool. And 3200 points keeps getting a bit away from me because I'm not exactly getting my, uh, my half-pipe jumps. I'm trying to readjust some controls as well. Where I'm like... Uh, I'm, I'm, my brain's sort of mentally going like Tony Hawk stuff, so I'm like, okay. You hold, like, forward, you'll go forward off the ramp, and it's like, no, I don't... I'm not doing it right, if that's the case. Nope. Just keep doing spins. You can't, like, do flips on the, on the alleys. Uh, that was not a good score, but we'll, we'll give it one, well, more cracks, I guess. Permanently stuck on the skateboarding. We'll never, we'll never be free. Ah, oh, so close, so close. Come on, come on, come on. We'll just commit to some triples for now, and then. Maybe we'll commit to some triples now, also me. <laughs> we'll go for the half pipe then. We'll go for the half pipe. Hey, what was that? Was that four? That was four. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't four. That didn't. <laughs> We'll get that, we'll get that, we'll get that, that, three to the left, four to the left. Oop. Okay. There you go, there you go, there you go. Woo. Oh, no! No, I had it! Come on, come on, come on, we got this. Hey, there we go. I just gotta do some some good old fashioned simple flips, and we should be good. Eh. Eh. Lots of points. Lots of points. There we go. There we go. Let's try and get a record just to... Oh! Give me that nasty gnork. There you go. The easy money. Just try and get like a, a sick record. And then people will be like, what the heck? You got like... You got 50,000 in, in Sunny Villa? <laughs> Well, not 50,000, but 5,940. Maybe that's a good record. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, no, this level's done. We've been in it long enough. On to the next level. And by the next level, I mean I have to walk around to the portal. I guess on your first playthrough, you're probably gonna have to just second guess these portals. Because it's like, it's not, it's not that kind of portal. It's a different looking portal. Also, so different looking, we gotta do a cutscene. I assume this happens after your second level. Oh, hi. <laughs> Just grooving, walking. Ooh, look out, Hunter. It's the scary sorceress. I've warned you already. This place isn't safe for small dragons and pussycats. Hey. Thanks, but I think we can look after ourselves. Try looking after this! Ugh, dead. <laughs> Come back when you finish witch school, okay? Say, is it just me, or is she kind of cute when she's angry? What? <laughs> Hunter, stop hitting on everyone. Or, or, or keep doing that, I don't know. 
One bro's got the hustle. Bro bro is trying. It's a bit down bad though, he's going for a rabbit. So now we got 14 eggs after three levels, which is a very, very convenient number because that uh unlocks uh both the other levels, but not the third one. Yeah, <laughs> three levels by the way, yeah. We got tons of levels in this game as well. Like it feels like a very, very solid number. Uh, I think the 20 is a speedway for reference. So there's you got your side character level and four spyro levels and a speedway in each of the four worlds, which is plenty of content. I think there's a lot to do in this one. The Rhinox have shut down our cloud generator and I'll never see a rainbow again. <laughs> <laughs> the real, the real tragedy. The real, real tragedy. But, but yeah, uh, I like how these enemies don't hurt you, but they are a little annoying. They, they force you to jump, and they force you to metal. Dude, the music on this one's a vibe, by the way. So we power the buttons, and we just... Continue, I guess. Big and strong like yours, I could easily glide across here. Imagine having wings and you can only like go up in the air for like two seconds. It'd be kind of cool, but not like not very useful. You do it at, you know, as a trick. I, I love this like ledge here, by the way. It's like ah, hmm, it's just a drop. Uh, uh that gets everyone. I swear. I guess everyone. Um, but yeah. Uh, on the topic of the, the yellow paint thing as well, I definitely saw some people say some examples of like, uh, was I saw someone go like, the, metal armor the bullet storm devs. Protects them from yes, I know how to charge enemies. If you hold down the square button, you can defeat yes. them with your charge attack. Um, I, I, I saw someone say like, oh, the bullet storm devs were like, you tried painting the explosive barrels any color other than red, but players wouldn't shoot them. And then I see some people just go, ah, yes, but Doom. Like the original 1993 one, because the barrels were green. They were all green. They had green gunk in them as well. But they were barrels. Uh, also, I, I, I saw, like, one one comment go, like, ah, uh, but, like, doesn't Doom have, like, arrows everywhere? Like, the painted arrows? And people are going, one singular level in Doom 2 does that, and no one likes that level anyways. It's a pain of level design. What's it? Uh... What's it called? Downtown? It's one of those, it's like a, a very like tall skyscraper city one. Um, and it is, it is a very like, I get, I get the idea for the level, but it's like that it's not quite the way you do it. Uh, and it's a very tricky, um, you know, idea to pull off, especially in a game where you can't look up and down, but uh, I don't think that's how it's done. Because a, a lot of those levels become mazes, and uh, Doom's levels work well when it's a very, flowing path through a otherwise complex area, that level is not, <laughs> like, it's not a flowing path. You get a key and then you go, oh, what does this do? You, get a you hit a button, where do I go? It's just all over the shop. Um, not saying it's a horrendous level, but it ain't, it ain't exemplary and it's not an example. That's the same f word twice. Well, well, if it isn't my favorite dragon. The sorceress has put me in charge of guarding these bellows. However, I suppose I might look. You should the other look out, bellow. If I was distracted by counting gems. Counting gems. So I'm pretty sure every time Moneybags appears in a level, he never asks for more gems than what are, what is in the levels. So you don't have to like bail, Ooh, yes. but you do have to precious, hunt around for gems if gems. you're not holding on to any. Well then, Spyro, you may now use the bellows any time you wish. Best of luck on your little egg hunt. Also, yeah, Moneybags is probably going to show up, like, more times in this game than <laughs> the previous one. And he was already, like, like, uh, endearingly obnoxious. Like, he'd show up in places, he'd be like, oh, I'm going to pay Moneybags again. Here, it's like, oh my gosh, they hammer it in. Ooh, hi. <laughs> Remember, to get your longest glide, press the X button at the very top of your jump. And use the triangle button to hover at the I, end I, of your jump. I guess that's how the X button works. Um, but yeah. Well, the story is, uh, people are very divided on the yellow paint thing, and all I'd say is, uh, I would like to see more examples of the games that do it well. Um, and I know we could probably cite a lot of, like, older examples, but, like, then, I don't know, sometimes I see people just dismiss it as, like, oh, they're just antiquated, or, like, people can get through that as if it's, like, like, kids couldn't get through that kind of stuff. Like, if kids can figure it out, 
I don't know why adults, like, fail at it. That being said, I completely get that there are focus groups where people don't get it, and I... I... Like, I don't get why they don't get it. But stuff like that. Also, yeah, we're at the end of the level already. Oh, you activated the bellows? Maybe I can get the cloud generator working again. Are you telling me that a rich bear was all that was stopping you from just turning this thing on? Oop. There it goes. Look at that. We're generating clouds. The Rhinox must have been using this thing to clog up the cloud generator. Hmm. Man, the skyboxes of uh, the hub world doesn't really look that much different. But I like how you get this rain effect now. Uh, so we might as well go to the little side area over here. I like how you you can smell a bit of preloading when the um when the music stops as well. Our sun has gone out. We can make a new one with our lava fusion cauldron and three sun seeds, but they keep burning up before we can get them in the pot. Step on the switch to get a fresh sun seed and keep flaming it until you get it into the pot. I'm just about to call this person cumulus. I know I'm immature. So uh yeah, what's the challenge? This thing dies. So you wanna you wanna flame it. Keep flaming it. Keep chasing it, keep flaming it. We'll get the gems later, don't worry, we'll get the, get the gems later. Uh this is this cool spot looking dude as well with his sunglasses. He jumps in and uh he's finally in. I love his little like dancing around. Nate flame the burning thing, trust me. <laughs> I guess. I guess I'll do that. You're gonna you're gonna bait me with like 10% of the things that's just gonna be the actual thing. Nah, I'm not gonna do it. He does have cool sunglasses, like this is peak, you know, physique. I want to be this guy when I get older. He's got a bit of time before he like truly dies out. There we go. Into the pot. And you don't have to do them all sequentially, you just gotta, you know, get each one. But each one goes on its own path, so this guy's gonna go on the very, very hard path where he'll go up all the ramps. Uh, what is the logic behind making a fire? Oh my gosh! Oops! Oops! Uh, making a fire made that you then have to spit fire. Well, you don't. You're not defeating him with fire. You're uh, keeping him alive, if anything, because he's about to extinguish himself by not being in the in the fire pot. But he needs to be uh, turned into the sun, uh, like a big sun, and you, oh, something like that. There we go. Pop three of them in, and uh, we're about to stare directly at the sun. Ah, it's so glorious. It's so glorious. Now that's what I call a sun. Here, you can have this last sun seed as a souvenir. I think it might be a dud, though. Ah, uh, yes, my favorite sun seed. 2011 Metallica album featuring Lou Reed. Everyone loves more than Saint Anger. But yeah. I don't have the, anything more to say about yellow paint. Here are my like flaming like sun seeds. There he is, the glorious lad, chilling there. More of a splendor and pride. Um, let's see, we got any more gems? Yeah, the high gems all over the shop, and I guess yeah, like naturally, it's tricky to find all the gems once they start spreading them out across these levels a ton. Um, Shout out to, uh, we might as well give some mild, uh, level design spoilers for Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. Um, now was that that weird stage where Universal acquired, oh, uh, Universal still had the rights to Spyro the Dragon and Crash Bandicoot, and they hired some devs to basically make sequels, fourth games in the franchise, and, uh, they sort of were given the inspiration to just, I like how this is, uh, another side area, by the way. <laughs> this is the bait. Um... Hello there. We usually wake up our rain cloud at the crack of dawn, but these mischievous spirits are stopping our bells from ringing. We gotta use the superfly and flame the spirits, or just miss them, or just miss them. Oh, 
Oh, God damn it. Um, but I like how you can also just do laps as well, so it's not that bad. He enjoys his tunes, he enjoys his jams. I should be terrified of a cloud with that face. But I guess these people like clouds. Do that. It fell out of the belfry. <laughs> just want an excuse to say belfry. Uh, I have completely lost my train of thought that I was saying before. Oh well, we'll come back to it later. Maybe. We'll see. If I'll remember it. Point is, Spyro Year of the Dragon's a cool game. Also, uh, the Egg Thieves are back. And they're just holding eggs now, so you gotta do... Do the huge. And un unlike Spyro 1, there's more than 12 of them, and they're not just in the first half of the game. Brian! All I remember I said earlier is I mentioned the Lulu. Uh, oh, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. I can't believe I forgot about that wonderful game. Yeah, so, uh, so, so, uh... In that year, I think 2002, we got uh, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly created by some studio that legit no one... Like, I don't know, man. I, I feel bad for the people who made it, made that game, but real talk, it, it was a very poorly delivered game. We can all accept that. Um, there's like a whole doco on like, why? Like, what is the history behind the development of that game? And there's a, there's a couple of fun things. There's a couple of real fun things we'll, we'll get to show off. Uh, like for example, someone programmed a, a basically an FU comment. Like he didn't actually swear, but he sort of just said like, yeah, developing this game has been kind of hell. Um, and put in a cheat in the game that lets you find the actual people who like, left the game mid-development. Who just casually put their names in the secret. It's great. Um, let's see. I, I know there's a way to get to that. I think it's a whirlpool. Like half whirlpool? There's a spirally vortex like halfway in the level. And it's just like not active until now. Until after you've like turned on the generator. So you have to just... Yeah, you have to just know that when you backtrack to the level it's like this is, this is on. Minus one. Minus one enter the dragonfly. Well, actually, enter the dragonfly is minus a thousand. Year of the dragon. This is just Spire of the Dragon with year of in the name. These dudes chilling on the roof. Oops. Got that elven ring from... Elven ring? Elven blade from... Uh, Fire Emblem Awakening. Go. A good old jumping on the roof section, though. But yeah, I don't think many of the gems are particularly like out of the way, just because they'll always have like they'll always have an egg somewhere in, a, in these rather exclusive spots. Wow! I feel lucky charmed, uh, but I'm not lucky charmed because I'm missing five gems somewhere. Let's have a quick peruse back through the level. We're gonna, we're gonna try and find the one crevice, the one, like, thing that Jem was just hiding. See, it's weird, for, like, Spyro 2, because I've played that game, like, bajillions of times. In my mind, it's like, I remember every gem placement, but here, uh, it's a bit unfortunate. So, okay, so the reason why I mentioned Enter the Dragonfly, uh, the other game for reference would be, uh, Crash Bandicoot, the Wrath of Cortex, which I'm more okay with? It's, it's not as good, but it's also, like, not atrocious. Uh, Enter the Dragonfly is certainly atrocious. It has some very, very shocking, uh, attempts and performance and everything. Everything is just, oh, oh. We'll get into that one one day, um, probably next year. That is right. Where's that gem? I need my gem. Oh, wait. Was it somewhere chilling in between? Around the edges? 
Oh, I guess I got these already. Because if it's not here, then I guess, yeah, side areas. I'll check the, the bells. I don't feel comfortable about me finding all the gems in the bell area. And yeah, I don't exactly see a sparkle anywhere far away from sight. Which that, that, uh, that ability is still there. The fact that, like, all gems, if they're visible in that direction, the sparkle will always render. No matter what's the draw distance, it'll always do it. It's such an understated feature. But it's great. Where is this hole? Like, where is this in space? It's just like, oh, yes. Alright. See if you can spot a loose gem. Could be blue, could be you. You could be the gem in my diamond. In my diamond? I don't know where I'm going with that one. Um. Spyro to the Dragonfly, I, actually I guess both of those games, Wrath of Cortex and Enter the Dragonfly, heavily borrowed uh, uh, five singular one gems. That would be uh, a bit painful. In that case, I think it's with the Sunspot, because I can't seem to find it, and I don't think it's on top of any of these platforms. We did one last, you know, I'm flying. I don't think it's anywhere though. Nah. Nah, it's probably with the sunspot then. We'll, go, we'll check out the sunspot. And it's not just casually chilling like back here. Nah, they didn't just hide it back here. Down we go. Um, both Enter the, the Dragonfly and the Wrath of Cortex borrow heavily from the third games in the franchise. So, uh, Wrath of Cortex has basically the same menu with the same map uh, or hub world where you pick levels. And uh, also, Pretty much redoes all the same power ups that you have to re get. Um, which is a little like, yeah, it doesn't really do anything that new. Um, if anything, I'd argue the GBA games for, for, uh, um, for uh, Crash Bandicoot are a bit more inventive. Oh! Every time. Every time. I, I, I can guarantee that one I have missed on previous playthroughs, like, first go. Like, I- like, I don't leave the level, I know I can get it, but it's just like, ah, oh, It's just chilling there, it's just hiding. I think we're good, that's- that's everything in... The Cloud Spires. Very, very nice. No skill point on this one, uh, because we got two in one level. And here we go. We're out here. Now we got tons of eggs, so we could, in theory, follow this lad into his home. At last, my portal is working again. Come visit me at the Tiki Lodge. At the Tiki Lodge. And he goes into his portal, away from us, but we'll go in there. The Molten Crater. Uh, this level has a section that we can't access yet, so this is going to be a bit of a weird one, 100%. But, uh, should be straightforward. Rhinox are running rampant around here, but I can't get anyone out of the Tiki Lodge long enough to do anything about it. Me when my employees are underpaid and they have to take every shift they can. Uh, flaming these flower things is not is not a skill point, by the way. But there are two in this level. I'm just curious. The music is again still a jam. The drums are just fun. I mean, I know it's Stuart Copeland. Like, I know he knows his drums, but just the way it's like bouncing between the left and right channels. It's driving. What? A, like, I love these little pig things all over the shop. These Indiana Jones guys, poor lads with whips, metal dudes. I like. I, I kind of like how every enemy is a rhino as well. Like, they really. I don't know. They, they, it, it's a bit inventive. Because all the other games, it's like the enemies are just whatever. Like, you're not actually fighting Norks for most of Spyro 1, and... You know, what is Ripto? Is Ripto a Rhino? Maybe. How many other enemies were there? Rhino Genocide. A. Hey, they're not extinct in the Dragon World. Be sure to 
keep your friend Sparks the Dragonfly healthy, Spyro. He's not my friend. He's if my co-worker. Low, torch a little creature like the slug below me to release <laughs> a Destroy the slug. Look at this thing. Are you going to tell me you want to destroy that? Look at him. He's so cute. I love him. We'll keep him alive just, just for that. Uh, but yeah, Enter the Dragonfly has a lot of other, like, fun bits, uh, of just like, huh, why? So they reused the idea of, like, having side areas to basically, like, you know, add more, well, be the minigames, basically. Uh, but none of the side areas actually contain, uh, gems, which is rather curious, I find. Um, also the side areas completely reload the game, which respawns all the enemies, unlike, uh, this game, where they actually do the logical thing of remembering what's the enemies you've destroyed. Uh, so there's that. Uh, they also go so overboard with the number of gems uh, because there are only eight levels. This game has like 16. Here, take this egg. They were giving them away at the Tiki Lodge last night. At the Tiki Lodge last night. Oh my gosh, Curly? That's me. I am Curly. I guess. Oh, maybe not. Bounces away. Yeah, so I mean, if you want to just like bolt with the levels after you've sort of gotten enough, um, yeah, here you go. Here's your, here's your sign saying, oh, whoops. Sergeant Bird is currently on an important mission to the inside of a cage. Tough luck. Thanks, Sorceress. Appreciate it. It's probably a bunch of those lines of dialogue all over the shop that I'm just not encountering. Also, we brought back the keys. I got a little bit of an interesting UI icon. For sure. Uh, but yeah, no, Enter the Dragonfly, like, eight levels is kind of shocking, but the levels are also, like, twice as large and just fairly repetitive. Um, I'm not sure why. Like, it seems like they've got ideas, and it actually gets better as the game goes along. People who drop right after the first two levels, there's some okay stuff to be had later on. But it's also not done very, very, very well. And then one boss fight immediately against Ripto. Again, by the way. And then the uh, game's done. Spiral. Also, you can ground pound in into the place where Ripto is very easily and door. beat the game well, in like three actually, minutes. They paid me to guard their hideout, but uh, that's irrelevant. I'll happily let you through the gate to chase them down for <clears throat> a small finder's Small fee. fee. Three hundo. Thank you, Spyro. And best of luck catching those dastardly egg thieves. I guess the interesting thing is that you only need money bags to open up, well, I, I guess this is the only one that's optional so far, right? Because you need to get the, the the partners and you need to, you know, you need them to continue on with the uh, cloudy spires. So, give us the Are goods. Are you the dragon looking for all those eggs? Because I saw a shifty looking character with one over there. Over there? Anyway, uh, oh, there's another egg thief. He's green this time. Everyone likes a <laughs> green character, green skin. Um, all right, skill point number one is uh, this magical wall. You can break it. There's a there's a life, but that's one of the skill points. We cannot get the other one just yet, but keep a mental note of it until uh, maybe later this stream. I might be able to grab it later, maybe. Yeah, we'll try it. We'll aim for that. Because I was going to say, like, this level, there's not a ton left. This one's actually a very straightforward level at the end of the day. Because, um, I mean, you know, we're going around this area. It's pretty pretty chill. Even though the music is jamming. Uh, so what are we doing here? Oh, they brought back Supercharge. Supercharge this time is... Uh, well, it's not back, actually. Spoilers. I lied. It's just an arrow. It's just an arrow. I, I jumped the gun. I'm sorry. I don't know, I like this. So it's like you gotta chase the egg thief. You know. He's an egg thief, he's doing it, you know, his own way. Let's see if we oh. 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 Ah. There we go. Moira. Moira. She is also green. Teal, rather. Anyway, I'll talk to this guy again. Hey, there goes another one! 
He was really fast. Maybe if I activate the supercharge, you'll be able to catch him. <laughs> Maybe if I help you this time. So uh, this one's a bit faster, but now the path is on. And you can supercharge. Supercharge is just like the first game. You don't go through gates. You gotta be on the track. Uh, but you can keep it up, even when you fall off the track, I think. At least for a bit. Um, I also like how you can sort of flame. You can sort of flame. How long do they work on this game? Uh, all of these games came out in consecutive years. So 98, 99, 2000. Um, like, I am very, very impressed. I assume there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of reused assets and materials. This game certainly feels like it's kind of just Spyro 2, but a bit more. Um, but it is like, I, I think it's, you know, I mean, I think this is the ideal kind of like schedule for a game. Put in the effort and you make three solid games with their own unique ideas all on the same engine and then start afresh. Might be the level design because maybe uh, because Rush so using beta levels from previous games. True, it could be. That actually might explain um, these small areas as well. Where it's like you make like this like supercharged track and you're like, I got love it. <laughs> it's really got nothing to do with the rest of the level. What do you guys say now? Those guys ought to be locked up. That well, the the dead. <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, you might be right. I'm curious how how the design of this one uh, one went. Uh, so I guess we'll unlock the chest that's at the beginning of the level, but otherwise, uh, yeah, we can't exactly do everything just yet, because, uh, we only don't have access to a Sergeant Bird who may or may not uh, appear in a later Spyro game. That one blew my mind as well later on when I hadn't played this game and hadn't really looked at the box art to see he was there. And then suddenly, hey, a later Spyro game has that character. So, uh, I guess we'll just leave. We'll just leave. We'll get out of here. Now we're gonna have a very funny number of gems to deal with. But that's okay. Back into the world we are. Uh, I'm gonna skip this guy just for a hot second. And uh, we'll go up here because uh, we've unlocked the speedway with 20 eggs. The speedways are completely optional. Uh, but every world's got one, which means there are just as many as Swaro 2. It's about it. They're not like they're not too fancy. They didn't put skill points as like time trials in here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> also, this was fun when Spyro Two, uh, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly said, "Oh yeah, Sparks can talk," and proceeded to use this voice, unsubtitled in the intro cutscene. <laughs> Completely unsubtitled. It's just it's shocking. Uh, I would. I, I will have a ball playing that game, because it's just like, oh my gosh, you, you face palm on like everything that happens. So uh, all these speedways have uh, two objectives, uh, which you can choose from that menu. Um, the first one is the huge. We do four objectives, hit eight of each, and then you're good. Uh, they are much more straightforward than previous games. Like, take a guess, you know, what kind of agency I have and changing my pattern you could you could definitely compete on time but like it's just laid out in front of you also are these guys reused from they're, they're doing the same like like scuttlebug animation from those dudes in uh um oh, i forgot the name a lot the ice level in spyro 2 not steal us badlands the other one so that's some crazy LOD swapping right there. Uh, and yeah, I guess each one has their own gems. Oh, where's he gone? He's down. There you go. Easy. That's it. Do all that, you get all your gems. We'll do the other objective, we'll get the egg. But it's very straightforward. Very nice. And yet the skateboarding took me like 10 goes. <laughs> oh, they give you an egg anyways. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that car outside. The people just zoom outside my place. <laughs> Sabina. I always thought Sabina was like a misspelling of Sabrina. Because I knew a bunch of Sabrinas 
but no Sabinas. Uh, so objective number two in all of these is a race. Uh, it's going to be fairly straightforward, um, but they get a bit like uh, trickier execution wise later. Um, the trick is, you'll see these uh, stars, they'll give you boosts, you'll see the, these butterflies are taking it. And, uh, well, if you're not taking it, you're screwed. Fortunately, they don't take all of them, so... There you go. You can also flame, uh, the guys in front, if you want. Which is sort of not worth it, except for the front guy. Because, uh, well, the front guy's in the front, so... And yeah, it's a lot of catch-up, otherwise. Yeah, you'll notice uh, there's some yeah, there's some cutting you can do. This one's very straightforward. It's just a bit of a figure eight. No minor though. Gives a bit more uh, objective and purpose to the speedways. Uh, but no like two player or anything, which is understandable. <laughs> Here am I complaining that Spyro the Dragon doesn't have two player, but it's like. This would be a perfect opportunity, would it not? We gotta yell at the person who chose the font for the, the lap indicator on the bottom left, though. Like, not the numbers, because I'm pretty sure that's the same numbers that they used in Spyro 2. But, like, what is that? Comic Sans? Diddy Kong Racing? It is... Yeah, yeah, Diddy Kong Racing. Like, we're at this awkward stage now where it's like, there have been a bunch of kart races now, uh, including the actual very good Crash Team Racing. Um, this game has a demo for uh, Crash Bash, which is not developed by Nording Dog, and uh, you can definitely feel it. You can feel it a little bit. Oh, I just want to flame him. I just want to flame him. Oh, I can just pass him. Sure. Oops. Hopefully that won't bite me. Yeah, that was a missed opportunity. Where's my Spyro Kart Racer? Spyro Dragon Racing. It didn't even need to be like kart racing, it could have just been like flying racing like that. Now there's no chance- well- Oh, true. Rip toys for Bob. Oh my gosh, there's no- There's- There's no- There's no, um, uh... Nothing is sacred anymore in the game industry. We shut down Toys for Bob. Um, also, I believe you gotta go to Time Attack because there is a secret somewhere after you've done the Time Attack. You'll have infinite time, so you can definitely explore around, but I believe... Uh, it's not under, it's like behind one of these. I think it might be this one. Nope. It'll be very obvious when you actually like see it. You'll be like, oh, okay. I think it's here, actually. Yeah, it's <laughs> just Hunter's chilling here. Whoa! A bunch well. of sheep and flying saucers just came out of nowhere and started blasting up the race course. And he hates aliens. Looks like I'll have to hop in my plane and teach him some manners. <laughs> go for it. Look out, sheep! Here I come. There we go. You can turbo. You can fire. All of these I kind of like, and also a sort of. Uh, I guess Ratchet and Clank precursors. They're trying out more and more things, and I guess at some point they just said, yeah, we want to do a space game. Uh, hold down the shoot button, hope for the best, use the turbo to your advantage, and try to hit seven flying saucers before they hit you in any way, which they can. As you'll see those shots, you want to not get hit by those shots. It's not very easy to hit these guys, but... When they're fast, they're fast. Go. There's the last one. Get back over here then. There it is. I hope that wasn't like killing your eardrums. <laughs> Woohoo! Check it out. The squad leader had abducted this egg. Whoa. Tater. Very, very nice name. Very, very nice name. I would name my son Tater. Just, just no, no irony. Uh, so with that, we're done. We can leave the level. You can guarantee that you've gotten all three eggs and all the the treasures just from the the flying challenge. So nothing, nothing weird there. Uh, yeah, I got a short thing I also want to talk about. I recently bought a um, what is it? Oh, what's the name of the brand? I'm gonna look this one up. 
you know, look this one up because I totally want to want to say the name of the brand here. We'll jump to the level while while we're at it. <laughs> One-handed steering in. Here we go. Yay! My portal is working. I'll see you at the beach. Here we go. So what I got was a uh, a trick key. Uh, G5 Green, or Green G5. It's a mini PC. Crit Key is a brand, they're like B-Link. Uh, sort of in that tier of, they make rather cheap, but sort of does some things that you may really, really want mini PCs. And I got a fairly, fairly good deal on this mini PC. Uh, While I was gone, my friends borrowed the Rhinox submarine, and then they took it for a joyride, and, and then they smashed it into a big pile of rocks. Oddly enough, the Rhinox failed to see the humor in the story and stuffed my friends in the jail behind you. This is a very great premise for a level. Also, we got ourselves an underwater level. Aquaria Towers 2, baby. It's not, it's not quite Aquaria Towers 2. It, it does not it does not quite hit that level, but it's, uh, it's a pretty fun level nonetheless. Um, we got these weird little octopus things and Rhinox with scuba masks and lasers. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this trick key, uh, green G5, um, what did they have spec-wise? I had, uh, mine was not a bare-boned one, I might as well say the price just right off the bat, which will make everything sound way more impressive. I got it for 280 Australian, which probably converts to like 180 US. Also, here's a chicken. You want to try and get the chicken? Or there's one chicken later. There's one chicken later in the level. Um, 280 Australian, so like 180 US, um, and, uh, and it's got like, it's got a, what is it, uh, an Intel N100, which is basically like Celeron class, it's, it is a quad core, but they're like E-cores, and, uh, it's very, very low power, it's like 6 watt, um, and they don't hyper-thread, but it's like, eh, 4 cores. Not the worst. If you want a quick summary of your progress in a world, you can press the select button to open the atlas page. I've been doing that a few times, but in. thanks for the thanks for the advice. Um, so yeah, I I think uh, it's either like two thousand or like four and a half thousand to get on like Cinebench, which is not a particularly amazing number when like you know like an i five will get like twenty thousand now these days. So it's like a lot worse. Ah, oh, I miss you. I miss your barrels. I love the barrels. How many times have I hovered in this game? I've barely been needing it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, also, we got a wonderful Jason! Wonderful dragon egg in the water. I know I'm under the water. Um, but, uh, but yeah, $280 and mini PC. You got the N100. This was also, uh, not a bare bones kit. This was, uh, ready to go so it had uh an 8 gig stick it's 4800 mega transfers which is like yeah i mean you know that's your, your regular old ddr5 but it's ddr5 i was not expecting it to have ddr5 on it and it doesn't need to it can have ddr4 if you want but no they they opted for ddr5 it's got a half terabyte ssd of some unknown origin i haven't benched it enough but it's uh it's at least a pcie 3x4 interface on it so got some, some merit, I guess, for not being crazy dirt cheap. Um, and then uh, the actual device itself, it has two USB 3 ports on the front. It's got a single USB 2 on the back, Type A, and I think it's a, there's another Type C, but I don't think it's like anything fancy. I think it is just, like, what are these shell guys? <laughs> like some of them are just actual shells. We rally with the family with a pocket full of shells. Oh yeah, this is also a very like funky jump right here. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even it's only just a handful of gems, so if you're missing like seven gems, just make sure you you double back there. Um but the the big selling feature, oh it's got two HDMI ports, which is actually quite nice. At the end of your glide. Yes, yes, hovering. Uh, but the, the key selling point for me was it's got two two and a half gig ports. On a $280 mini PC, two two and a half gig ports seems like an actual swell thing because what I wanted was a, a DIY a router. So I picked one up and I'm currently DIYing a router. Also, hi, another Sheila section. 
Ain't that weird? Only one of these levels doesn't have a character. My seal friends are trying to take down a Rhinoch fortress. I'm about to go and lend a foot. I love the smell of singed Rhinoch in the morning. Nice. I love referencing movies that kids have definitely watched. I mean, that's probably a lot of things in this game are like that. It's the same thing again. Swimming is, uh... Not actually that bad, because you can just double jump out of it. Also, I love these uh, bullet bill launches. Teach you early on, you destroy him. It's all good. All good in the hood. Hi, Sheila. The Rhinox have built a fortress on our beach, and we're going to blow it to smithereens. We just need oh you to take gosh. out all the for you us. Can't, this we're is right why we can't now. make these games, sure like, nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna casually carry dynamite. Click the last green gem in the water section. Like, just there. Uh, if not, then I will definitely go back to that. Um, the aim of this part is you got 80 seconds and you've got to destroy just the turrets. You don't have to do everything, but it's definitely got to be the turrets. And they put quite a few next to each other here. Um, yeah, I, I can go back because you, you gotta go through the corner in order to truly leave. I just want to get, get to the objective quicker and <laughs> just push it out of the way. This isn't too bad given that you can just knock the blocks from under them. And as long as you're going clockwise and not anti- Oh, oh wait, no, this is anti- This is anti-clockwise. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I picked up a little mini PC. Uh, it also had Windows 11 Pro? Like an OEM key on it? So I guess if you want it for like... Your, your, your grandma. Um, and I had like, like a half meter... And like a 15 centimeter HDMI cable, like two of them, one one medium length, one short. And I'm like, that's that's usual for a mini PC <laughs> to just have those. Wow. And the AC adapter. I can't believe I survived that blast. It's a good thing I kept this egg nice. And it's a good safe. thing I got my hard hat. <laughs> We're just just doing this again. <laughs> oh, it's a puppy for some reason. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we blew it up. Why not? Yeah. Alright, let's just double check that there's not just, uh, casually more, more gem in the water. There might have been. And there probably was. Uh, I keep thinking that there's, like, a, like, a section up here. But it might be back there. Actually. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a, what a crafty, like, spot right there. go and yeah just a bonus egg so yeah it's uh, it's a pretty clear spot if you if you haven't gotten it um but yeah unfortunately i'm not using the windows 11 on it i am just i just installed proxmox i installed pfsense i've got it as part of the cluster and then i made some terrible decisions such as uh well not decisions but like okay well i probably wanted to have the same ip as the old router which means i need to unplug the old router and just well, i mean i can't like split the connection anyways i don't see a gem unless i just picked it up like just then i think we're good i think we're good i think we're good i think we're good okay <laughs> remember there's another side section as well <laughs> where, where are you pulling those from? Whoa! Whoa! Can I charge it from his back? Oh, hold on, let me see if I can charge it from his back. Yeah! <laughs> it's a good feeling. Hi there. How you doing? Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I didn't have internet while I was trying to do it, and uh, well, rather, I was using it as the one router, so it's like, okay, how do I know that this actually works? And the answer is, uh, NBN takes 20 minutes to give your new device an IP. And it's the same IP, but it's also like, yeah, like, it just takes its time to go, oh, yeah, yeah, no, this is legit, do the sync, do the, do the whole schmoodle. Uh, not shifting. True, true. This is the one! This is the one! You see him swim- Oh, well, I've lost him, but he'll come back. He'll be somewhere. There he is. This one chicken! He's doing, like, laps around here. We'll see him again. If 
but never can I'm so I think we'll see you again. Oh. There he is. Do you get a skill point for hitting that one chicken? Uh, it is referred to as the funky chicken. Uh, there might be something about his model, but uh, I don't go close enough. Like how these old games had all these nice environments, even though if they were connected, didn't make sense. Oh, yeah. I still like them. Like, even if they feel a little empty, it's like, I don't know. Like, you got these shells over there. You got, like, these, like, fun mounds. When you, when you throw all the enemies in, then it makes a bit more sense as well. Um, I think it's because you got, like, these weird portals, so it's like, there's something significant in here, but... Yeah, yeah, and, and, and especially as well, like, Mario 64, the hardware is so much more powerful. Even though it is a much older game, the hardware is so much better that you can provide some fun detail in places. And also, Mario 64 is a bit of a weirdly empty game as well. Now, Majora's Mask, that's the serious stuff. The tunnel is chock full of Rhinox and floating mines. The only way to retrieve that egg is to defeat every single Rhinox in the tunnel. Alright, if you were thinking like, oh, what if I miss a Rhinox, don't worry. You have to. Uh, fortunately, it's only left and right. It simplifies the work here. And you also don't even have to hold square. It does it for you. But hit a mine, you die. Miss a Rhinox, uh, you don't die, but you, you fail. Oh, we're just gonna nail it first go, are we? We're gonna nail it first go. Nice. <laughs> Surprisingly good fluid dynamic characteristics. From now on, all of our submarines will be egg shaped. That's a very, <laughs> that's a very fair statement. Hail to the king, baby. Aliens are real. The government said so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. I. Uh, what was the other thing? Uh, oh yeah. Also, um, when. The router was first connected, it was not very fast. Um, it was like a quarter of the speed that I would have expected, which my previous router was doing fine, but I had problems with a previous router, like just the default that I got from NBN, from Aussie Broadband. worked! That dumb octopus dropped the jail key while he was shaking me. Now I can free my friends! Oops, I dropped the lift key. We did it! <laughs> I forgot to tell you, one of the Rhinox had this egg in his lunchbox. Oh my gosh. Fantasy Star Dizzy, he's back! Here we go. Uh, so we've done the side areas, which means... This should be the last few gen- No, wait, no, there's another side area, I forgot. There's three of them, and I missed the- <laughs> Swam right past that one. There's another side area, is it up here? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Catches you off guard that you got a third one up here. There it is. Just, just cash. And uh, this brings uh, one of my favorite mechanics that was in Spyro 2, but not very often. Bluto the Rhinox has challenged us to a naval battle. Our speedboat versus his nuclear shark submarine. If we win, we get the dragon egg he's guarding. If we lose, we have to spend a month in KP. <laughs> Not KP. What do you say? Do you want to take on Bluto? Okay, good luck. Just remember, stay away from the sharp end. So I like how, uh, yeah, it's like, okay, here we go. We've got this fun system here where we ride a boat and we can shoot. And, uh, yeah. You will only ever do this once. Uh, it controls very weird because I expect tank controls, and it is not tank controls. It is uh, kind of whatever controls. Oops. Yeah, I take some shots. He's got a bit of health though. But this reminds me of the um. Remember the? Oops. Oh yeah, I gotta get the boxes too. Get the bow. It's up to spike in. I remember there was a retro achievement for this one for not taking a hit, and it's like very tricky. Especially for that, I guess. Oops. I, 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 hold on, hold on, let me, let me bail. Need 
need my box. I need my box. Ooh. <laughs> What? What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you? What do you got against purple people? What do you? <laughs> this guy. This guy. Uh, also, I made the yeah. So so when my connection was slow at first, I was then like, okay, maybe it's because the virtual network driver that I had, because uh, Proxmox is like, oh, you, you know, you virtually provide a driver that will then you know connect to the network. Um, but you can also just pass the PCIe device directly, which will be the network driver. Uh, I did that for both of the PCIe, for the, both of the, the network slots. Both of the ports. I, I couldn't connect into the Proxmox terminal anymore. So I couldn't tell if it was working. Also, it wasn't bound to those. <laughs> anyway, so it would, it would boot up the VM, steal the, the network connections. And uh, then not have it assigned because it's not configured to do that. So, uh, but eventually I, I read up a ton about the PF Sense, you know how that works, what's the things I need to configure. And uh, as of now, we are currently an hour fifty-one into a stream with zero dropped packets. And I know sometimes you drop packets because, like, Windows itself is just—it's not drawing that frame, so the, the like the renderer just goes out. I, just, I drop a frame because of that. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, oh, is that, that's everything? That's everything. Cool. And I nearly, but didn't lose a life. Very nice. Um, but yeah, over time the Vert.io got better, so I assume it's just NBN being weird. Thanks, NBN. Um, yeah, we can now swim out of this level and fly out all of a sudden. And, uh, we'll be prompted after clearing out the final level to... Defeat the boss. Let's have a crack at that, shall we? Like just immediately. Let's head on over to the balloon. I I like as well that like depending on what level you finish last, you will get a different line here. Just for that brief moment. The balloon's all ready, sir. Just jump on. Be the kind of person who ends the um the the Sheila level last. So uh, yeah, we can leave. We can head over to Midday Gardens. But on your way to the next hub, you will always be ambushed by a cutscene and a boss. Listen carefully, you stupid girl. Stupid I'm only girl. I'm going to ask you one more time. Why haven't you disposed of that infernal dragon? I, I've tried to scare him off, your highness. But he's just not afraid of anything. Not afraid? Not afraid? Why have I been training you all these years? Use some magic! Here's a spell book. Whip up a monster. Imagine just getting a whole book and it's like, boom, now I know how to conjure demons. Kill him? I don't <laughs> care what <laughs> you do, you useless brat, as long as you get rid of him. Okay, let's see what we got here. This ought to do it. You, come here. Ah. I'd be terrified. Whoa! And he's green. Nice. Uh, how much of the game? This is. Uh, there's four worlds, and this is. That's almost all of the first world, but I will continue on just a little bit because I want to get the next character and then come back and clean up the, the few things I couldn't do. Uh, on that world. When I heard the sorceress was planning to ambush you, I got here as fast as I could. No worries, though. This wussy green toad no match for you, the two If of you're us. really Australian, you'd say nowries. Uh, but yeah, here's a boss. The bosses in this game are actually kind of serious. <laughs> like the first game, they're a bit of a joke. Uh, this guy, he's not too bad. You just charge him, hit him into the lava, and then uh, Sheila will do a coup de gras and then it'll proceed to chase you kind of scarily it's like oh this music is also like it's very minor key very dramatic strings as well it's got these fun like synth noises in the back some 
dramatic drums. Seriously, I feel like Stuart Copeland's really outdoing himself on this one. Now you can't you can't rush this guy right away, but fortunately he doesn't hurt you. Well, the fire hurts you. If you want to run into that. Um, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wait a little bit. Be patient. We'll almost be there. Oops. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I should have really grabbed like some butterflies or something right now. Just chill in this fight. Seriously, he takes he takes a good number of hits as well. What a very dramatic like environment as well. Just all lava. I love me my good old lava platform, I tell ya. And yeah, if you die, you get us the whole boss again. Yeah, he means serious business now. He's, he's starting to go a bit quick on, on the flames, but he's not, he's not too bad. I've done this tons before, though. I guess that's the thing. I love the sparks. When he, uh, the only sparks on screen right now. Oh, whoops. Ooh. Oh, I cut that one a bit close, didn't I? There you go. Give him a ground pound and he, uh, oh, he ain't coming back. Rip. Also a rainbow. There's only so many animations, unfortunately, but, uh, eh, you get an egg. You get an egg. You get an egg for your troubles. All good, so. Um, yeah, I don't have too much to say about a router. It sort of just works. Lava is about it. True, I do prefer a good, a good bit of lava. What was this one? I guess it would have been Metroid Prime, I guess. <laughs> it was like a game without bottomless pits. They used one. And here we are, welcome to the second world. Was in the kitchen, that's why that comment was delayed. <laughs> there, there's no worries, no walkers. Okay, Dragon, you've managed to survive longer than I expected. But you haven't the slightest idea what sort of dangers lie ahead of you. I suggest you grab your cat friend and whatever eggs you found and hightail it back home while you still can. I'm telling you this for your own good, you know. You know, I'm starting to see what Hunter likes. I mean, you know, GF who gaslights you. The bro's got some taste. Uh, let's let's keep my involvement in this world a little minimal, shall we? Um, and let's just go for the uh, the character who's chilling over here. Ah, my good friend Spyro. The sorceress caught this naughty bird letting naughty off rockets bird. in her fireworks factory. Not better than a naughty but I'm dog. I'm willing to release him into your custody, provided you pay his outstanding fines. Oh, how bad is it? Oh, 700! <laughs> <laughs> what a sucker. Uh, that is, it's a far, far better thing you do today, Spyro, than you have ever done, and, uh, well, so forth, etc. You get the idea. So I will say that the, the little, um, the green G5, it's normally 400 bucks. Amazon did not list the actual original price. I just seems to see 280. I went, oh, seems good. I would never. <laughs> Sergeant Bird, 9 If you feel that Waiting way, I'm sir. sorry. Uh, you say I that. I think you'll have to find your commanding officer for that. Hey, what are those things? These are the latest military hardware. DBX-9 rocket launchers, state of the art. So why Isn't the DBX-9 um, an Aston Martin? I have limited ammo, and I wanted to conserve it. All this. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> hey, where'd you come from? I thought dragons had all been dead for a thousand years or something. Well, the rumors of our extinction were slightly exaggerated. We just wanted a little peace and quiet. Well, if it's peace and quiet you want, you should stay clear of my homeworld for a bit. I reckon I'll be blowing up Rhinox for weeks. Cheerio! I'll be blowing up Rhinox for weeks. We'll proceed to cram it into the end of the stream. <laughs> I believe uh, Sergeant Bird is still Tom Kenny, by the way. The bro is versatile. I'll tell you that. I don't know if he's still Tom Kenny in the remake. Like, I know I know Spyro is, but I don't know if he's doing Sergeant Bird as well. He's definitely not him in A Hero's Tale. 
I have to train the hummingbirds. They must be in peak physical condition if we're going to take on the sorceress. So, uh, yeah, let's start getting some wacky characters going on. Uh... Sir, the situation is this. Yesterday, at 1845 hours, the Rhinox invaded. We defended as best we could, sir, but without your leadership, we didn't put up an effective resistance. By 1900 hours, the rest of the squad was captured and the Rhinox had complete control of the base. That was 15 minutes, not even the Battle of Hamel was that short. Uh, so what does Sergeant Bird do? Well, he waddles around, he shoots, uh, he can't go through glass, but he can also just fly. And uh, we start getting into a fun, uh, crazy strafe mode. There you go, so you can press L1 or R1 to just go whoosh in that direction. Or hold both, and you can control it with the stick a bit more. Be careful not to walk right back into the portal though. He's got a jam vibe though. He's pretty neat. Um, this is uh, the point as well where the, the levels start getting... I think you get 500 gems a level now. Yeah. So, we're gonna have some more, more goodies to pick up. Um... But yeah, <laughs> nearly done with nearly done with that world. We'll, we'll we'll finish this. We'll go back for that, and uh, yeah, you can also Thank say you, hi sir. to these hummingbirds. Welcome. So yeah, so the goal of the level is we gotta free all four of the hummingbirds, or five. Sorry, I can count. There were five there. I'm gonna press uh, which button is it to bring up the GUI? Pause, I guess. Yeah. You gotta pause for it. I swear there was like a dedicated button. In the previous games. I recommend you take the enemy out with your rockets by pressing the circle button, sir. Oh, I got flower potted. Um, but yeah, this thing, this uh, this this uh, green G5. Ah, oh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty low power. It's probably low, lower power than my previous router. And uh, doing it all myself means I get all the the fanciness of whatever you get out of PF sense. The rockets are not strong enough for this chest. If only there was something strong. Bug. Buck bum Buck Bumble? This is very Buck Bumble vibes. What would I not? It's time to rock with the Bickety Buck Bumble. Such a jam. Anyone who doesn't say it's a it's a jam. I swear, that's a jam. Buck Bumble is proper underrated. Oh hi there. So here's a uh oh wait, hold on, we'll get the explanation. Sir, I've captured the enemy Russians. They won't march far on an empty stomach. Oh, oh, rations. Oh. <laughs> Man, it's been like two years, hasn't it? Since World Event. I know, right? Sir, the Rhinox have blocked the way out of this next cave with a security door, and I don't think you'll be able to blast your way through this one. Recommend you land on the weights and carry them to the pressure sensitive security switches way, either side way. of the door. Recently, I played when a game called Bee Island, and only just now I realized one reason I love it is because it's always press fun to press the triangle buck button once to look down, press it again to look up. I, I, I do like games that, like, even if they're not mechanically like other like games I love, it's like, hey, if, just so I get the vibes and the feelings and the aesthetics. It's a, if anything, that's the reason why I love, um, Batman Arkham Asylum and for everything I rip on that. It's like the reason why I love that game is because it's just parts of it where I'm like, ah, oh, that's like uh Metro Prime and all that. The other end uh is beams using actual uh anti-aircraft guns. I was gonna say double A because we were talking about Crypto A earlier. Oh, yeah. I'll get him. Get him. Nope, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm out. I'm out, I'm gone. Uh This game's a bit meaner in terms of you're probably gonna take more hits. Than other Spyro games, but I don't think it's mean in terms of like. Uh, oh yeah, we can hit the gophers, can't we as well? Maybe not. Not now. I am dead, dead, dead. The gophers are later. The gophers are later. Just come on to this guy. Can hit him. You know uh, the game of a song from Total Distortion. Uh, I do not. I'll look that up after after stream. There's a lot of like good jams all over. There's a lot of like really good retro games, um, and I hope uh, uh, I'm participating in the uh, the retro achievements uh, Dev Jam. Um, they're currently uh, doing one for uh, the uh, the Topographic CD or the PC Engine CD, as it's referred to. 
Um, so I'm gonna do a set for Vasile, which has a brilliant soundtrack and gameplay that I am not confident I I know anything about. But I know the soundtrack, so that, one, that one's just like jazzy. It's funky. It's like it's like is this music for a strategy game? Whoa. Okay. Um, so yeah, still working on that SingStar set. I'm very close to the end. Uh, I'm gonna aim to try and. Get a QAable by uh, the end of the week. Keep fighting the good fight, sir. We're almost there, and I'm uh, right behind you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, SingStar is a pain to track memory, uh, given retro achievement limitations, which do exist, and it's fine when the game's more straightforward, but when it does involve pointer chains and lookups, and it's like, yeah, you can't. You, you, you have to do stuff in 01 time, or. The number of instructions you have, you can't, you can't do loops, you can't do like too many lookups or conditionals. It's got to be very straightforward. Um, so maybe that'll change one day, but uh, for now, it's not. So the thing style logic is gonna have to uh, gonna try my best. But uh, if I can figure out the the leaderboards, because uh, when you're in um, the uh, oh, can we get the line of dialogue or there we go. Keep fighting the good fight, and then sir. I blew up everything. Mm. Cool. Alright, so these bombs, because of course Penguin gets bombs, um, will help us in the good fight because now we can take out the gophers from earlier. And I forgot to get these these bottles, so we'll get them in a bit, but uh... There is a skill point waiting for you if you can blow up all the golf uh, golfers? <laughs> blow up golfers as well, apparently. Um, but no, the gophers... If anything, the golfers would love me just feeding the gophers. I love this uh, top-down camera angle as well, it definitely helps a ton. Now, if only I had, like, I know there's, like, one gopher just chilling there. And I know I need one more bomb. <laughs> so I'm gonna go all the way back. Oh well. I not even take out this guy. Get him out of here. Get him out by Friday. Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope that uh, when I release that set for SingStar, um, even though you know most of the most of the magic is the emulator, the game itself, and uh, the website for sort of having the infrastructure. I'm just doing the finishing touches on specifically just hey SingStar. Just kind of showcase and spotlighting it, but uh, I, I hope it's a fun experience uh, for the people on that site. Um, especially as well, I don't know if there's another karaoke game on that site, so I guess this would be the first one. And uh, I'd be very curious because uh, you do have to sing. Mission accomplished. It's great to have you back, sir. Thank you. I guess that objective of freeing the hummingbirds is a. Uh, well, extra. Ryan Lee? I keep thinking Daryl Lee, like the chocolates. We're already at 36 eggs. That is just shy of a quarter as well. There we go. All on the lines up. <coughs> there we go. Alright, let's bring this bomb all the way back. <coughs> oh my gosh. I have the throat tickle right at the most inopportune time in the two and a half hour block I stream. How dare it. I've been pretty good health wise, for the most part. <laughs> like, I know some people like, uh, I, I definitely know there's some like people who I follow in the streaming world who are not, um, they get the, the illness around the springtime or the winter time and it's spring in the US. Uh, here it's like nearing the end of summer and we've got a bit of a toasty day today, but we've also had some, yeah, it's, it's cool again. That kind of days. Let's just get rid of the bombs so I can. Well, it's not really necessary unless you want to stand on the ground. I like this little tunnel here, underneath that that one bit, and one of the hummingbirds is here as well. This is a very like uh, I I really love the the structure of um, the Metropolis level. I'm ready to be debriefed, sir. From uh, from Spyro 2, and I get the vibes on this one. I want to say they shared a, a very common level designer, but maybe, maybe a level designer was uh, shared on 
lots of levels. Like maybe I was just like, I don't know, I'm overseeing every level. I draw out a, a flow. But think about it, like I, I still miss like this era of games when it's like it's 3D and they're like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna use that 3D. We're gonna give you flying characters and like ledges and tall jumps and stuff like that. And I miss that. That's cool. There are so many games that are just so flat now. Or if they're not flat, the climbing things is not like an actual feat because uh, you know, yellow paint. We've been to that conversation before. gophers are there in this level? It must be like close to 10 at this point. Bonk. There we go. One more hummingbird to hum for. Do you like how the music just kind of casually stops for a bit too long? Yeah. Reporting for duty, sir. Re reporting for duty. I need more bullets. Now it's an oldie. It's an oldie now, apparently. It's not that old, is it? I do know, ah, uh, is it this game? I think it actually is this game. There's like a risk of like some gems actually falling off the level and they properly handle that and they'll respawn them kind of where they should have started at. But it does happen sometimes. It's just good. Oh, it falls off. Never to be seen again until two seconds later. Like here, it's like you're just hitting these guys in the air. It's like you gotta, you gotta just find those gems again at some point. They're gone. They're gone. Skis. Oh, and there go all my bombs. I need to grab some more. Uh, yeah. I am, I will still, I think I've said this before, I am tired of singing Never Gonna Give You Up. Uh, I then realized that the single player career is a little weird. Here's some pro tips I found while developing the set. Uh, one, the single player uh, only has 24 of the songs because there are only four venues with six songs each. That means Take On Me, Never Gonna Give You Up, um, Careless Whisper, uh, Groovers in the Heart I think? Um, just a little for some reason, and I'm trying to pick the other song off the top of my head. Uh, Ace of Spades. All not in the career mode, because they're just not there. You can't pick them, and therefore the game will never suggest that they're a favorite song. So we'll never suggest them for the other events. Also, uh, the, the, um, yeah, at the ends of ranks 1, 2, 4, and 5, uh, you'll have a challenge where for the first two they're recording gigs and it just goes here is your favorite song we think sing 6,500 points in it which shouldn't be too bad and you're forced to do that in order to continue but then at the end of rank four you get uh, randomly chosen three of your favorite songs and you have to score uh, 5,000 points in each and uh, the last one there's a skill point for getting all the gophers um, and for the final one, uh, three songs it picks, and you have to get 20,000 points total. It's definitely, you know, the trickier challenges, but it's not the worst. Um, I love this tunnel as well, the Tunnel of Doom. Whoa. I'm pretty sure you don't need any, yeah, you don't need any bombs going on here. Um, but weirdly, those challenges after ranks four and five. Was captured, I recovered this egg from the enemy, sir. This egg. Uh, the rank four and five challenges, if you fail them or proceed to hit end song three times, the game doesn't care. It will tell you in the emails immediately after, and then it just continues. It doesn't care. Which is a very, very odd, I guess, thing for the game to not even check the final, like, thing, the final mission. And given that. Like, you know, if the recording gig sessions require you to sing a song with a certain level of points, I don't know why they don't at this point. So after that, all you gotta do is just cruise through songs, get up your rank, and eventually the game will just finish. Um, which is very, very odd. How many gems am I missing? Uh, we'll probably see on this screen, won't we? Uh, oh my gosh, 34. So if I need 34, that means I need to hit 89. I love that chilling there. It's, that's the window from earlier. 
It's not a very large hole, but it is like, given the scale and the breadth, it's like, no, no, it works. Waddle in, waddle in. This is not gonna be enough gems. Oh, it actually, it might be. Given how many, like, five gemmers they put all over the shop, it actually could be. That's a 10. Uh, I'm, oh, that's it. Oh, well, especially when you walk past it there. There you go, that's it. Woo! 500, baby! Level complete, baby! There we go, very, very nice. Alright, okay, let's return back to the previous world and clean up the few loose ends of world one. Someone's gonna be like, few? What do you mean, few? Also, Southern Birds is chilling here. I have assessed the situation. We need five men to operate the whirly gig. Thank you. Yes. Uh, but yeah, you can stand on it and uh, yeah, you can just go back. And you can also go to the boss levels as well. There's no like hole where the boss levels are, unfortunately. Not like not like Crush's dungeon just chilling there. But I don't mind it. And uh, alas, we are past the point of like, you know, boss levels. You know what I mean? You remember, like, Metalhead being pretty much like a proper level? Alright, let's go back in, uh, the Molten Crater, and, uh... Try to, try to finish it up. Yeah, I haven't really been playing anything, like, casually. I've just sort of been, like, figuring out the SingStar stuff. That's the problem. And I think a lot of people on that site express the same thing, where it's like, Ah, eh, you know, I was playing lots of achievement sets, and then I... Did development work, and now I like only do development work. Uh, I'm going to try to not burn myself out too much. Like, things are certainly demanding a lot of my attention, but I hope that I don't have to spend as much time on other sets, and I just kind of trickle them out. I'm just off to the Tiki Lodge for some R and R. Okay, sure. Um, not saying I'm going to do like complete downtime, but we'll see. I'm playing a game of hide and seek with I wanna, my friends. I want to play some games if at some point. If I can't find where they've hidden their heads, they won't let me join the Tiki Lodge. Help me put them back together, and I'll make you an honorary member. Wow. All right. So we're gonna leave that head there because there's a skill point for getting all the heads, put them right next to each other. Also, look at these like fruit loop toucan sams going on. Uh. Also, all these birds keep respawning, so don't even, like... I don't think you have to worry about them for gems. They're just gonna do their own stuff. But yeah. Go over to this guy. Pick up his head. Try to get the heck out of dodge. Watch out for the Toucan Sams. And we're good. As long as you don't put the heads on the totems, you're pretty much set. Oops. Oops. Oh, not on the totems on their... on their bodies. Oh, this is a regular chest. Wow. Yeah, I like these sections though. They're, they're good fun and, and a nice change of pace. And honestly, like, you know, it is the third Spyro game. If you're going to do something wacky. Yeah, no, I, I completely accept it. If anything, it's a little weird that like, uh, Enter the Dragonfly, for all the bits that it copies out of Spyro 3, it doesn't copy any extra characters. Uh, but it does still do wacky side mini games by, uh, you know, it's like a tank section. Spyro drives a tank. There's like secret slide levels, there's like there's stuff all over the shop. And it's definitely not like a game that doesn't try on the levels. It's just that it's like it ends after what feels like a long first world. And then it's like, oh, and it hasn't exactly done anything that's, like, cool yet. But again, again, we'll get into that one. We'll get to that one. Alright. Where's our last head? Where's my head at? Where's my head at? I'm chilling in here. There he is. I don't know how many gems I need, but, uh... Alright, here we go. Here's all our heads. Oops. Yeah, that's close enough, apparently. They all dance around, and you get a skill point. How many skill points are we at right now? 
We got the one in Sunny Villa. We got two in Sunny Villa. We got two in this level, because remember, this one had the supercharged wall. Um, there was one in the, uh, the, um, the Seashell Shore. And then we would have had one in Sergeant Bird's Base, so we're actually at, like, six now. Very nice. There we go. They're pretty, like, evened out throughout the whole game, so... Uh, because what was this? Faro 2's kind of, like, front stacked. Where, like, the last one that's in a level is, like, Skelos Badlands, which is one of the earlier... Well, like, yeah, there's 16 in the first game. Oh, sorry, in the second game. Four of them are dedicated to speedways. Um... Three of them are dedicated to bosses. That only leaves you nine. And, uh, well, not Skelos Badlands, but, like, um... Hold on, like, Aquaria Towers has one... Colossus has one for the perfect Take score on the hockey. Horikos has one for the windmills. Idol Springs has one for standing on a platform. And then it's like Scorch is like mm. Hill the Coconuts. Uh, Fracture Hills had the supercharged course and Skillless Badlands had like two, right? Well, yeah, I see that one remaining before. gem. I hope it's not a bad omen. <laughs> hope it's not a bad omen. I see that one gem. I'm assuming all the gems are in this area. Oh, we'll, we'll just double check how many gems we need. There's still some around. Uh, ten. And I need to blow up a wall. I haven't done that yet. Whoops, whoops. That's the real danger. Never mind also dropping the heads for touching those things. I haven't blown up a wall. Man, if only there was a clear wall where I could shoot. Nice. Isn't that weird? That's a... There's two walls in this one level! This one's not a skill point, though. Luna, Luna. For all the Sabrinas I know of, I don't know any Lunas, personally. What is Luna short for? Luna New Year. Uh, I guess I'll do just another look around, but... Uh, hopefully... I mean, I don't remember... Like, I don't recall there being any spot in the supercharge area that I would have missed. Dude, these guys are mean because they'll like try to follow your height level. I'll just have a look around clockwise, I guess. At least in one of the headrooms. Yeah, yeah, I, d I don't feel like I'm missing one like outside of the Sergeant Bird section. Well, I'm missing 10, so, like, ideally it's like, okay, there's one yellow gem just chilling somewhere. But, we'll just keep checking. So I came in that door, out that one, go up through here. And we're in this room where, unless there's like a balloon somewhere, which there isn't. Because that's, that's the thing, is that the balloons will throw you off. Um, I think I've done the lap. I think I've done the lap. I can't think of anywhere else here, so it must be outside, I guess. It's it takes like no time to keep going in and out because it's like oh, all those enemies respawn anyway. So, Oop. darn excavators! Oh, well, there you go. Whoa. Ten, easy. There's a bit of a gnarly jump, not gonna lie. Very, very dead. Easy. Easy money. Well, let's get the heck out of dodge. Now, there's one more thing. And I've... Uh, personally, I've never done it in this order, but I'm pretty sure I can do it now. Um, which is that sign. I think, after defeating the boss, you can go back to that sign. Um, usually when I play the, this game, I sort of forget to do that until after everything. But, uh, no, if you go next to the sign, Zoe's here. Spyro, I found an egg, but only Sparks will be able to reach it. There's a small hole that leads to a crawdad farm. Will you crawl through this tiny hole and get the treasure that's on the other side? Mm. Crawdad farm. So, after each world is a little bonus level. It sort of 
looks a little weird because it's just like the adventure continues. What do you mean? But these are these are some bonus. That's what she, exactly. These are some bonus Sparks Hello, levels. Sparks. Maybe before you take on the nasty crawdads, I should give you some help. To start, also let's is Zoe smaller shooting. all of a sudden? Press the circle button to shoot these targets. So Sparks plays like a uh, almost a twin stick shooter, except you only have one stick. <laughs> you have a dual shot controller. And they didn't do it because they can't assume you can that. You can also move quickly by charging, like Spyro. To charge, hold down the square button. Use your charge to chase down this fast enemy. I'm gonna do it without charging. Oh, can I do it without charging? No, we gotta do it. Pretty much works as you expect. I wanna hear Sparks talk. I think I'll say. Uh, will he actually. I don't think I'll say something. I think you gotta wait until the speedway. Oh my gosh. Come on. There you go. I have, I have annihilated that bug with the power of my wings. Now for the hard part. Being a maneuverable dragonfly, you can also slide in any direction. Why <laughs> doesn't Spox explain slide. anything? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. L1 or R1 button. Hold, hold on, I'll, do, I'll, I'll, I'll try and do my, my interpretation of it. Try sliding up and down to hit the targets in this room. <laughs> I'm like, you can try, that's killing my car, I'm trying. Um, so yeah, you can strafe. It's, it's like a strafe walk, so doing that, you'll always aim in that direction, rather than going in the direction you're looking at. On your travels, you'll notice butterflies that give you health, just like in the dragon worlds. Not only Are that, you telling me this is not the dragon world? Will give you special powers, though only for a short time. Just eat any power-up butterfly, and then press the X button to use that power-up. Your power-up is shown in the top right of the screen. So you get these little power-ups, you can use it or lose it, there you go. So they're all fun, like, you know, differences in shooting, I guess. This is a dragonfly level. But yeah, I love this, like, mechanic, and every world's got a Sparks level just chilling here. And it's like, I don't know, it's just very Looks fun like and you're interesting. Ready, Sparks. If you need any more help, just choose the help option from the pause menu. But uh, yeah, they, they do have to stop and explain it because it's like, eh, it doesn't really control like Spyro. It's only gonna alienate some people. Dragonfly. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all of these uh, dragonfly levels, by the way, have a total of one egg and 200 gems. So they don't take very much time, really. But they're good fun. And I think they'll be good uh, good ends to the the streams. Um, also, Sparks does not take quite the full damage. It's got a health bar. Whoa. I think this is probably like... You could tell they're sort of thinking about that Ratchet and Clank, you know, Kind of just wacky minigame mindset at this point. And this level is probably pretty straightforward because it's just like picking up, you know, certain colored keys. And... Also, the uh, the 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 boxes will be uh, walled off, so you got to sort of go. Oh, I got to dodge the constantly spawning lobsters. Try and find the door. Take all these dudes. Ultra Kill has a Crash Bandicoot bonus level. Nice. There we go. I know I missed some stuff over there, and I'll probably continue missing a, a few of them uh, just for a hot second because I gotta now duck over to get the green door, which I think is on the left here. It is some fun levels, even if, uh, you know, there's not there's not too much that's really involved. I found a bonus level and suddenly the camera goes from first person to third person. And the next thing I know, I'm jumping on boxes and spinning to kill on it. Very, very nice. More games need, like, callbacks. Alright, I got a shield. I got to move it or lose it. What am I doing in here? Hit the switch. That's a sound effect straight off the same DVD that they took sound effects from in, uh, Crash 3, isn't it?
I feel like game- I don't know if, like, game devs are too afraid of, like, mechanically referencing other games. Like, just do it in mechanics, don't just, like, say it. Just, like, do it. Fishing level? Heck yeah! Alright, we're good, we're good, we're good. Visual novel level, very, very nice. But um, what's a what's another game that's reminding me of that with a visual novel level? Super Paper Mario's got a visual novel level. It's, it's, does it count as a visual novel level? It, it's, it sort of is. The boss fight that's done entirely through dialogue. Fox's greatest enemies, lobsters. Do, do some people, like, I wonder if anyone, like, watching this now or VOD, Fallout 2 also has a bit of true, true. Depending on how you feel about it, some of the Fallout, like, Fallout 3 is a visual novel. You do that with Fallout uh, 1 as well. I unfortunately did not get to do that with uh, Fallout 2 when I played it. I had to, I had to wing it. Now we have big lobster fight. Apparently, killing his big meaty claws causes him to fire uh, fireworks at me. He's not that bad because he doesn't really go anywhere. Now what is he? What can he do? Oh, he can do the fire, I guess. And then he explodes because of course he does. And this reveals Nora. I thought the master was Fallout 1. I thought Fallout 2 was, um... I wanted to say it was an enclave guy, but it probably wasn't. But yeah, no, I thought the master was Fallout 1. Are we good? I think we did? Yay, we did it. 2008, what a wonderful year. It was, 2008 was not Year of the Dragon. It could have been 2000 had I not picked up 8 gems in the other world. But, uh, we did it! That's the Sparks level. Um, there will be more Sparks levels that play sort of like this at the end of each world. And we shall encounter each one of those as we get along to it. But, for now, uh, that's the entirety of World 1 done, as well as also the, uh, the Sergeant nice Bird work, level. You've beaten the Crawdad King and found the Lost Egg. Not only that, but some of the dragon magic seems to have rubbed off on you. Now you can pick up gems when they're even further away from Spyro. This is actually also a, a reason to do these levels now. This is a proper upgrade somewhere. But it's not really, I don't know, they're just gonna tell you. Um, so okay. We'll figure out more of these power-ups as we go along, but hopefully that uh, helps me out in the in the long term. I'll pick up some gems that I've never... I was like, man, they're far away. But yeah, we'll fly over and we're, we'll call it here. The second world. We got some good progress, we might as well show the egg names just for that. Yeah, well, yeah, who was the, the Fallout 2 boss? This is a very Mario 64, like just seeing the bum 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 bum, the eggs just rotating back and forth there. Frank Horrigan, ah. Uh, ah, uh, there we go. So yeah, there's your Sparks levels just chilling there. And uh, yeah, wow, <laughs> bang on 25. Wow. Cool, okay, good stuff. All right, with that, I would like to thank you all so very, very much for watching. Um, yeah, Enclave, yeah. Uh, if you enjoyed the stream or uh, not enjoyed it, or if you watched the whole thing or parts of it, uh, you can, yeah, follow or stuff. And yeah, I hope you really, really enjoyed it. That's, that's all good. Um, yeah, VOD will be on YouTube. I'm having a good string of uploading the VODs, like, they're processing sooner, but they're on Twitch anyways, so if it's not out, you just watch it on Twitch. It's all good. Um, and, uh, yeah, feel free. I, I, I don't think I say this very much. All this, all the VODs are all, like, Creative Commons, whatever, on YouTube, so literally just, you can, you know, I give you permission, you can download, you can do whatever. Keep them, keep them around. Uh, I keep them around as well, so... In like 50 years when the internet is destroyed, you could probably ask me, I'll like find a USB stick, give you like some videos, that kind of stuff, I don't know, so. Uh, sleep tight, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, uh, and uh, also remember it's Valentine's Day on Wednesday, so make sure you gift your Valentine the gift of a Super Bowl victory 
Um, or, uh, yeah, I should have, oh, I should have started with the Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> see ya, everyone. Have a good one.